Hey, we're hey, back, hey, Chubbies. Here we right. go. We got. Hey, I've been looking forward to this one. I am too. It's not every day that you get to sit down with a man that's just killed him a brown bear. <laughs> well, I know it is America's I, number one. Well, like I said, man, I'm no hunter, but I I've got all the stories, man. I uh, I feel like I've been there, but I I uh, never done it. But man, I love talking about it. So Jason Williams, ladies and gentlemen, is is with us. Uh, you know, he just got back. So it was it McCart or it was uh, Alaska, right? Yeah, Alaska. Is that the, is that the only place you can hunt a brown bear? You can probably hunt them in Montana. No, they're <clears throat> they're kind of protected out west. Yeah. Um, in the lower 48, they're protected, aren't they? Yeah, so you might be able to. They've tried to do some draw tags in Montana, but they were resident only, and most of the time they get. I don't even know if they've had a season because it seems like at the end, um, animal rights get in and kind of about like the wolf issue. It's kind of. Well, we're gonna talk about that too. I think you can cover it. that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we're at it. So you go and you kill this. You you kill a brown bear. That's what tonight's podcast is about. You you guys are you're going to tell us all about this thing. Did were you ever were you ever nervous? Well, from the video I saw, it looks like you're pretty good ways away. Yeah, it was started out as a bow hunt, and you know, oh yeah, we'll probably be all over the place. So I'll apologize in, in advance. No, <laughs> I want to know where'd you go to last <clears throat> the peninsula. So, southern south. It's uh, yeah. It's um. So arguably the best place in Alaska for the biggest brown bear is Kodiak Island, and um, one or two is uh, the peninsula. So this is where they're killing the biggest of the brown bear. And for those that don't know, they get confused sometimes between grizzly and brown bear. They're essentially the same thing, but you'll hear me talk maybe a little bit tonight about um, like Boone and Crockett standards. Yeah. Um, they're essentially the same um, animal, but they're different subspecies in Boone and Crockett recognizes, and rightly so. Grizzly are more interior, so they're not going to be anywhere close to some... Um, Civilization. Uh, it's mainly the salmon. So okay. the brown bear that's on the coastal regions are eating salmon, which obviously high protein, so they're getting ginormous compared to a grizzly. Grizzly are more interior and more... What do you mean by interior? Interior, more not close to the oceans. Oh, inter, inter intercoastal, I guess, or yeah, inter, just, in, mainland. Yeah, inside. Yeah. Okay. So what we have out in the lower forty-eight are brown bear, but they're essentially a grizzly. I didn't know till thirty seconds ago there was a difference between a brown bear and a grizzly. I get that. I get that a lot. What's well, you grizzly or brown? I said there. It gets. It, it is kind of confusing, but I do like the way Boone and Crockett kind of. To give you an idea, a big grizzly, and I'm going to do a grizzly hunt. I think me and Ollie's got it spring of 2025. So um, a big grizzly will be, um, you know, seven and a half, eight foot, and probably six, seven hundred pounds. Okay. So, you know, maybe twice the size of, you know, your black bear is, you know, a good black bear, maybe four, th five hundred, four, yeah, three fifty, four hundred, yeah. yeah. Numbers getting flat. so is a brown bear like a cross between? A no, it's essentially a it's a it's a so it's grizzlies its own species. You're telling me? No, there is there are there are like subspecies of brown bear. A subspecies of brown bear. Yeah. So I just assumed that all brown bear were grizzlies. So is are these uh, now? I will say, and I just attributed it to um, hibernation, but I've seen bears that have like more of a longer skeleton. Maybe maybe a little not I don't want to say skinnier but maybe like a longer neck. How, how big how big are the brown bear you're talking about here in Alaska? We'll, we'll get to this yeah. and you know obviously it's been top of my bucket list for a long while and and all honestly growing up I um, didn't even think I could do it. It was kind of that far off the radar because expensive. It's expensive. You have to go. Um, so Alaska to answer your question, my brown bear is. Um, you know, we obviously you can't do nothing with it when you know to move it because it's that big. But the guy that I had, had we kind of estimated this is pretty unique. We'll get to it. He was seventy six years old. Oh my! So I had you know a unique trip. So the assistant guide was his first ever. He um, just got out of the military. Ian was his name. Um, it was his first ever guided brown bear hunt, and the head guide was 76 and 
we had he was obviously humble you talk about spending time in the tent because a lot of times in alaska too the weather's just nasty yeah you just it's it just wears on you we'll when get, was this like october ago? oh it was october okay yeah so but um brown bear will get you know a 10 footer is like the epitome of it uh, okay and you know 13 1500 pounds wow okay. so it, it's like killing be, a cow it's yeah. um you know, like I said, we'll get to it when walking up on it. I kind of thought, and I'm obviously a big hunter, been doing a lot of big game hunts for, you know, been going out west since 2002. So I kind of thought I knew what I was getting into, and I've been to Alaska six times, do it yourself, just dropped off, you know, with a pilot, just kind of on your own, because the way Alaska works for some of the, uh, and it's probably a good thing, brown bear, you have to go guide it. So okay. you cannot, like me, you, hey, you want to go to Alaska and let's plan a trip, which I did a lot of that when I was younger um, and obviously could save money. You just hire. Chances are. Yeah, you cannot shoot doll sheep, mountain goat, grizzly or slash brown bear, um, but you can black bear, moose, and caribou. Oh, so yeah, that, yeah. yeah, so that was my, and you can go unguided. So, so you can you can free hunt. The br- black bear, the moose. caribou, and yep. moose. Yep. Ta- or, uh, I know, obviously, you got to buy a tag. Is that points no, in Alaska? That's another good thing about Alaska, too, is, you know, out west is, I always say, to try to tell people, explain, out west is awesome, even if you're not a hunter. Elk and mule deer, or even just seeing the mountains, it's beautiful. But Alaska's out west on steroids is the best way to say it's. Oh. I've been I've been from Frank or from uh, Fairbanks all the way to Seward. Okay, uh, drove it back and forth, went all through all the highways up there, went all over. Didn't get didn't get any farther south than Seward, and then I also went to Yellowstone, and I would describe it the exact same way you just did. The, out west is cool, but out in Alaska, is it's and ten if, times bigger. And if you're kind of a hunter in, um. You, when you go to these wilderness places, it's just um, you don't really want to see other people. You kind of want to hunt by yourself and, you know, quote, get away from it all. It's getting harder out west and, yeah. you know, kind of what we started talking about this. Out west, this, it's like supply and demand with anything. It's so much easier to just go to Colorado and hunt. And there, um, the demand for those type of tags make it harder to, you know, hunt where Alaska – you know, you kind of, um, even if you go do it yourself, it's a little, it's definitely a step up being aggressive, just hiring a bush pilot to air taxi to just drop you off and say, hey, buddy, come back and get me in 10 eight, days, 18 days, 21 days. I did a 21 day hunt. Did you really? Yeah. So 21 days in the bush. Yeah. It wears on you. That's tough. I mean, that, I mean, I don't right, care. And that terrain has to be, it's, you know, uh, challenging. Yeah, we'll get maybe a little. I took a um, guy with me today because, uh, or this trip to videotape it. Um, and I was trying to explain to him. He's a hunter too, but, you know, and um, we'll get a little bit more in depth to this, but it just wears on you. It just wears on you <laughs> being in a tent and, you know, the um, boiling your water so you, you know, don't have to. And I did get Giardia in 2006. 2000. Water poisoning? Yeah. It's in. <sighs> Just being in a tent, cold, windy, no shower, you know, brushing your teeth kind of, it just wears on you. Just the lifestyle, it's, I don't know, obviously I love it, I'm made up with it. It's it's definitely, um, it's got to be your cup of tea. Or it, you, it calluses you, know, you. It does. And, you know, a lot of times in the tent, you know, I go to, um, you know, it's a coffee shop and chill coffee quite a bit, and I was talking to Ollie about it, that you, you appreciate Tonight, a little warm fire, you know, yeah. <laughs> ski pop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sweet tea. It, yeah. It, 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 it does what it's supposed to do. It humbles you. And, um, you know, and all honestly, I, you know, if I would say something little about it and you know, not get too in depth, but, you know, especially today, you know, you're, you're all in tune with your business and phone vibrating and email, text, TikTok, or whatever else it is, social media. And it's hard sometimes to really, you know, lock in and get some clear thoughts. Mm-hmm. Out west, you're not really, and you, um, or you know, in Alaska, you're not really. You can't run from nothing. You got all the time in the world. Mm-hmm. So, 
we get a lot of distractions here, you know, especially nowadays. You know, the it's good we can stay in touch and communicate, but you know, Alaska, you can definitely get away from that. You uh, know? Yeah, whenever I went out west, you you had cell phone service the biggest part of the time. I mean, there was some there was some spots in the Rockies that you know I'd lose it occasionally, be deep down in a hole, but. In Alaska, you didn't have it until you hit a town, and you I didn't anyway, and that was in 2018, and I thought then, I, I can remember thinking, I mean, I had I was full-blown into business, you know, had my mm-hmm. business in, and and I can remember thinking, you know what, I have no choice but to turn it off, because like, it, like what you're saying, it was like uh, physically and materialistically, it was turned off for you. Oh, yeah. yeah. But it's your internal answering machine that that kept ringing Uh and then finally after a few days i spent 10 days out there and after after two or three days you kind of internally turned it off too it was it's good yeah it was real good it was real good that's that's a hard state to achieve now i mean oh it was it was the first time i'd felt it since the 90s yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah. it was was weird yeah yeah yeah. So and and then I wasn't near. I mean, I still had radio. I was in a car. Yeah. You oh, yeah, on the other hand. That's why I said it's it's on steroids. You it's on. Get, yeah. And the good thing about Alaska, you know, we touched on it just a little bit ago. You can get away from people, and that's what you kind of want. That easy. It, well, it's there's not very many roads. <laughs> there's not very many people. It's all air taxi, bush plane, and that kind of adds to the trip too. You know, you're in a little small little plane. You uh-huh. get to see all that, and yeah. just, hey, drop me off that lake, and you drop right in. So. Cause you're are so yeah let, okay let's let's start off look let's just let's just tell the whole story here so so you you get it how did how did you figure this out how to do this okay quick version of it is and we kind of touched on this off the air um, I've always been a well got introduced to it by my grandpa my dad and parent you know didn't hunt and um, obviously into sports and stuff through high school but. Um, it just clicked with me. Grandpa took me hunting, white tail hunting, like we got out here, and I was. Um, How old was you when I white tail hunted? Yeah. How was, old was you when you first started hunting? 14, 13. 14, Okay, so you waited a little bit compared to your buddies. A lot, of, most of your buddies was hunting at six and seven years old. Yeah, I was kind of into sports and stuff, and, yeah. and um, that's one thing I try to do now. I got uh, you know, it's a good friend, Alan Kiefer, and some other. People. No, not I, uh, Kiefer. <laughs> I like. Uh, and, you know, I have two girls, but I got lucky they, they did hunt with me. But I like taking um, kids hunting, and yeah. I've done it quite a bit. And um, just, you know, like you touched on, the only reason I didn't get introduced to it to is because um, no one no one did. No one did. You know, yeah. I, I kind of had to talk my grandpa into yeah. taking me hunting. And he wasn't even really a hunter. He just did it kind yeah. of, um, I guess, because I asked him. So... Maybe that's probably, that is why so it's a little was it Was that your first game was, was Whitetail? Whitetail, yeah. Mine was Rabbit. Rabbit? Yep. Uh, well, actually, the first I think my first hunt was Squirrel. Oh. And then uh, then we Dad was big into rabbits, and then obviously you pick up deer. And since then, I, I haven't progressed past, I mean, obviously a few birds. Recently, uh, a few years ago, got into turkey hunting. Yeah, yeah. Turkey's uh, great. Your typical Ohio stuff. Yeah. And so you did that until the early 2000s. You were a whitetail yeah. mainly. Yeah, I got into hot and heavy, right, especially after high school, stopped playing sports and didn't go to college and play um, you know, basketball or anything like that. And uh, You guided? Uh, had a whitetail outfitting business in 2006. Six maybe or two thousand five through two thousand nine for about somewhere around there. Yeah, I remember you guiding. Uh, yeah, that was pretty neat. So basically, for people maybe don't really. So it's like try explain to people. It's um, you know, take people to the woods, hunt and fish, and you kind of have to have more of a pedigree. Why would I pay you? You know. Yeah. And in, in the same side, it's kind of like a bed and breakfast too that. We had food and concierge lodging. business. Yeah. yeah, food and lodging set up, and then obviously tree stands and stuff yeah. like that too. And we had Dave Lusk on the show too. Oh yeah, Dave. Yeah. Dave's been doing it. He's yeah. a hustler. I yeah. mean, you know, he can. He that's that's a full service business. That full service. Yeah, and I mean, it, it's intense. Like that's yeah. a very intense setup. I, mean, I thought it was my dream job. You know, to do it. Yeah, and you know, my background is uh, finance, uh, accounting. My degree, a lot of corporate and worked at OU for a long while and then went part time at thirty two. So And you're how old now, Williams? Forty nine. Ooh, you Chad's age. Yeah. You're a little younger. Yeah. Yeah. Were you class ninety two? 
93. Yeah, 93. 93, okay. Yeah. I'm a little younger than you. So, um, I don't know where we was going with it, but. Just what you started. How, how you got started. Yeah, yeah. How, how, what, what brought so, you? So, 2002, um, I had never been out west. It kind of. A lot of this stuff, even like this brown bear, wasn't it? I want to say it's on top of the bucket list, but it was so big, it was like... And you didn't know about it. The internet was not hot back then. Yeah, you are right there, too. You, you were reading about things that you had never even seen. Yeah. You know, not, not even too many movies. Was it, are you saying, was it kind of like a pipe dream then? Like, you're like, man, I'd love to do that someday, but I, I to couldn't go to, really connect the dots. Yes, yeah, so To I, go to Alaska was... I mean, out west was on the radar, which is yeah. how I got started going out west in 2002... But Alaska was, it wasn't like. Almost know, it's, untouchable. It's like saying, I don't know, I'm a, I own my own insurance business. You yeah, know, yeah, when, yeah, you're, yeah. When you're an eighth grader. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm going to be the president. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Good job, yeah, Joey. Yeah. 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 Good job, little Joey. You yeah, know, yeah, so yeah. it, uh, but t- 2002, um, uh, I was getting ready to get married and, I told you guys this earlier, I thought I had a bunch of money saved up, but it was going like water and I'd always been a, <laughs> been a saver and um was a cost accountant at general mills and got lucky um the manager there was shane green and uh i know that guy yeah and uh <laughs> shane was from out west and had a um a brother that was hardcore still lived out west was a hardcore western hunter still is and i kind of sir Monty. oh yeah. yeah ronnie's a character but I kind of, um, you know, I paid cash for the ground, you know, that was where our house sits and I don't mind and Steph's and um, paid cash for a wedding ring and kind of thought it was a big ring at the time. And, you know, it was going like cash was going like water. So yeah. I went to Shane. Shane, I got lucky. Shane kind of was, you know, was good to me. Um, gave me a lot of life advice, common, very common sense smart Shane was. And. I said, man, I want to see the Rocky Mountains. I want to, you know, get my. I'm talking about having kids and getting married. Kind of well, thought, get, get yeah. it out of the way. Yeah, and I, my money, you know, my money was going. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I always wanted to, uh, elk, and still to this day, elk, brown bears up there now after that trip. But elk, um, I wanted to do elk hunt. You know, can you hook me up with money? And mm-hmm. you know, I wanted to see the Rocky Mountains before I got married and had kids and all that kind. Of. So Shane said, well, we're going on a mule deer hunt. You know, you're welcome to go. I said, well, bakers can't be choosers. I'm, I'm in. So, uh, you know. Hard why? decision. You're, <laughs> but, yeah, hard, uh, hard decision then. Yeah. You know, well, do you go, do you, do you blow the money on that? Not blow, but do you do you spend the money on that or I do you keep saving for the elk? Well, I figured it'd be gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I kind of knew my wife back then, too. Yeah. She, <laughs> she's Stephanie's hard on that. Yeah, she's a swiper. So <laughs> she likes swiping. But, yeah. Um, no, so I jumped right on it and, um, like I said, Shane's not really the hardcore Western hunter. Yeah. Like, and but Monty was, and obviously Monty, um, that so, kind of got started. So give me an, give me an idea on what you're saying a hardcore Western hunter is, because the reason I want to talk about that is I'd say a lot of our listeners, the the ones that I know, are are pretty avid uh, Ohio tri-state hunters, which um, I, I think you, you're definitely the guy to ask. There is a difference between hunting here and hunting out west and now Alaska. But you mentioned it earlier, and you said that Monty was hardcore. And, and like, that's the thing that, that I'm having a hard time even fathoming. Like, how hard is it out there? And what, what kind of shape and what kind of just – because you said Monty was legit. Yeah, Monty's an animal. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I like to uh, – it. I get it, like – Ollie Parker, I took him with me this year. He's a uh, he's thirty years old. I hired him for my businesses. Um, we'll probably get more into it, but I'll try to give you a quick version. And he's a hunter. He's yeah. a good hunter around here. He's killed net two hundred inch whitetail. Um, you know, and I kind of tried to tell him, you know, it's it's different. But I would say there's three type of hardcore around here. Hardcore whitetail. You know, you're turkey. Set, yeah, you're if you're hardcore around here. Yeah, you kind of know what I'm talking about, especially if you're a hunter. Out west is a different story, and then what's what are you? So what's out west? Out west, the mountains. I mean, like you know, just um, hardcore packing in on your backpack. If you do it like that, I mean, you can have some easier hunts if you stay around the road system. 
but for the most part um you, you want to get in the herds and in the thick of it you you kind of want to be aggressive you know and get away from people you're going to leave the trailhead in the mornings you know your ramen noodles or instant mashed potatoes your food's going to be on your back your tent and hey buddy you got this 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 and you you know you might be gone for seven eight days especially if you spike camp out it gets aggressive that's typically only bow bow you rifle you can too um, they don't much but well the 2018 on i did with the money we that could be a whole nother well a whole other episode but <laughs> we we money got aggressive and we got in we paid people to hack pack us in on horseback and um we was back in there um just south of jackson hole and Ooh, um, deep, the high country yeah yeah that's another thing too that people don't understand around the whitetail around here you're usually sitting in a tree stand you know 600 to, you know feet elevation and you're if that waiting for yeah. the game there's only a few spots i mean well yeah 600 yeah i'd say around here you could, ohio doesn't even get above 15 does it probably not that's in ross probably or maybe in the eastern part and and these ones out there are up to fourteen thousand. Yeah, you probably won't be that high, but yeah, you'll be at seven or time, eight. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. A lot of times, the good hunting's tree line, which is usually around nine, nine ten. Is a tree line at nine? Okay. Obviously, different mountain ranges different, have them, yeah. but when you are at nine, you don't it, the oxygen. You could be Lance Armstrong, and you're still getting your butt handed to you. So, and you're very like off kelter. Off calendar, the hiking, and you know, it, like, again, are, are you are you always on the move? Like you say here, you know, you're in a tree stand. You're Most you're usually time. trying to find them out west with the bigger terrain. You're trying to find them, and then when you find them, then you're trying to set up and plan. And the bad thing about like elk, if you spook if you spook a whitetail around here, most time, you know, hundred acres, he's going on to the neighbors. You know, there's oh, he's just getting away from you. Just, yeah, yeah, you spook a herd of elk, you know, they might go seven miles. You're screwed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're screwed. So. Yeah. Hey guys, time to pay some bills. This show brought to you tonight by Brad and Sarah Munn, owners of your local McDonald's restaurants. Brad and Sarah have done a lot for our community and McDonald's has done a lot for all of us. You know, the, the, their, the statement, I'm loving it. We can all relate to that. We've been loving it for years. And we love what they do for our communities uh, and our families. But let me talk about a big charity that they do, and that is the Ronald McDonald House. Man, anytime you get a chance to leave your change for that, it's a great thing. They allow parents of sick children to stay with their kids at the hospital for free. And uh, that's just the kind of things that McDonald's does. Get out and support your McDonald's restaurant. Yeah, and That's, if you spook a couple of them, the whole herd's going to leave. Yeah, and to kind of finish that thought, you know, then you say, so out west is definitely a step up. You're hiking. It's the elevation. You know, your your food's on your back. Or, you know, sometimes we, like me and Monty, sometimes we'd leave tent camp or leave the, um, Monty had a nice camper, you know, and we might be gone for three or four days. And you're taking your supplies on your back and stuff like that. And then to you know give alaska some credit alaska you're doing kind of that stuff but there's no one around you're getting dropped off by an airplane and like i had called the girls when i shot my brown bear standing over top of it on a sat phone and i said hey i, sh I shot one you know it's kind of proud and you know lacy and lakin have always kind of they've hunted with me i would say we're somewhat close but um i said it'll it'll take me a while you know i'm going because this was going to be a 21 day hunt if I needed it. And originally was going to be a bow hunt for this brown bear. And, um, weather took a turn for the South. And, um, but when I was talking to her, I said, Hey, you know, shot one, you know, I'm going to be home early, you know, be, I should be able to be home in probably about five, six days. And Lacey's like, what did you say? I said, maybe, yeah, about six days I should be home. She's like, what do you mean? I said, it's going to take me six days to get out of the wilderness. It's like yeah. five different planes. Then get back to <laughs> Ohio. Then get to Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. you know, um, Alaska's, you know, is definitely, like I, you know, try to say out west on steroids, you're getting five different airplanes. You're getting dropped off on float planes or, you know, Tundra tire. And, you know, it's definitely the epitome of um, 
wilderness type hunting by far i was I, i'll be honest with you I, I looked at a lot of wilderness um had some i had some bad had had one encounter where i'm not i'm not con, convinced that like i couldn't have died out there with like a gang of people like a, a group of uh we went to a park out there okay like a like a pull off like a shelter house and it was me and my wife and my mother-in-law and we were just looking for moose and um they ran us out of there so fast it wasn't funny. They yeah. surrounded us. A group of bikers did. I mean, like, it's so desolate that it's kind of like – it's freaky, isn't it? Like, yeah. I had never been in wilderness. Like, And then, like, the grizzlies, you don't want to go – like, I was, I was telling Dad, like, I wouldn't want to be out here on a horseback by myself yeah. deep in the woods. Like, there's – them grizzlies just kill you. Yeah, they're a different temperament. Like, the brown bear, they're all aggressive, but brown bear – Grizzly are a little bit more aggressive because food is, is scarce. The yeah. brown bear, the salmon. To, they're running salmon. They're running salmon. And not that they're not. Don't take it the wrong yeah. way. But grizzly, you know, b- black bear are usually, unless you split a, a you know black bear with her cubs, uh-huh. they're usually docile. Yeah. You know, grizzly, uh-uh. Grizzly, brown bear, they. So you're out there. So you went out there with this. The, so you get, you get out there to this hunt. Okay. So you set this up. How do you get your... Um, gear out there how did you plan that that would be a small feat in itself wouldn't it yeah um so to finish that uh 2002 I told staff once yeah. lifetime trip you know talked her into oh yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, let's go back to that yeah. and i do call and i haven't missed a fall since <laughs> so <laughs> you haven't missed a fall since no i i took lakin and lacy on a couple hunts in the fall um lakin shot a, a big elk that was um it was primarily her but I didn't hunt, but obviously I took her on the hunt. But no, I haven't, haven't um, missed a fall since. And you know, like I'm kind of um, Ollie, I think is going to do this on the uh, video he's making. But I'm going to Alaska five times next year. So yeah, uh, four different hunts, and I'm taking Lakin on a fly-in fishing trip. But I'm trying to knock off a bunch of these hunts that I've been putting off putting off even though it's not like i've still went out west so the last 22 years i've been doing do-it-yourself type hunts you know just picking a trailhead trying to you know save money and keep putting money in real estate i'm kind of a tight tight and you know aggressive person tight it's a semi-aggressive person every time i got money saved up i just bought property and and hoarded you know acres versus saving dollars and um I uh, always wanted to do do-it-yourself hunts to see, you know, a little bit more of a challenge. And uh, I've shot moose in Alaska, do-it-yourself, care, two or three caribou, do-it-yourself, I'll drop camps. But now I'm starting to do these hunts that are guided um, and got obviously some good experience for the last 22 years of, you know, just being by myself in the wilderness and surviving mm-hmm. and getting Giardia. And, you know, the meals have come a long way with dehydrated meals and some of that stuff. So how do we get to... The equipment out there. So Alaska, um, you have like um, bush, like beaver is usually a, a thousand pound payload. So when you hear people say beaver is a um, a float plane out there, they have a Cessna 185. A beaver's a little bit bigger, so the beaver's payload's a thousand pounds. So if me, you, and Chad was going out there, and you know I weigh two hundred, you're two twenty, you're two twenty, whatever, then we got three hundred pounds of gear. So and I've seen this a lot, you know, we're waiting in the hangar to go out and say there's a group of buddies. Because that's usually what you talk, try to talk in your buddies. Because if you're 1,200, people could die. The, the, the pilot, absolutely. The pilot yeah. is fun. Is, <laughs> He's probably like, no way, man. <laughs> I've been there. And that's the thing, you know, all summer you're trying to lose weight, stay in shape, obviously, for the hunt itself. Yeah. But you want to make weight. And, you know, that was the... Um, you know, our thing is, yeah, we make weight, we can make some, take some vodka. So, yeah. but I've seen it in the hangar too with, you know, so a lot of times to go to Alaska, excuse me, you, you try to talk to a couple of your buddies around here. And over the last 20 years, I've switched buddies, not that we're not friends no more, but a lot of times they can only go, you know, once every other year or they're not ate up with it as much as you. Yeah, so yeah. I went through you know, still friends with all these people, but Matt Bethel was hard for a while. And, you know, obviously he's not doing the life it. changes. I mean, yeah, I've, things happen yeah, and, and yeah. it's not, it's not anybody's fault. It's just what life, life changes, changes yeah. priorities, kids. Yeah. And I, that's one thing I could say, you know, you know, my wife and my daughters, I've, 
you know, I missed Lakins. She kind of understood this year, you know, um, I missed her senior night for volleyball because of this trip. But for the most part, I've definitely been present and uh-huh. uh, took, but it, you know, priorities change and stuff like that. And uh, tried to do a lot of those type of hunts, the aggressive hunts when I was younger and save money. And, um, but when you make, we call it make weight or we're being the hangar say there's a group of two or three hardcore buddies there from Illinois doing the same thing. They're getting ready to fly out to a different lake or different river to float. Uh-huh. And the pilot, well, you know, they weigh your stuff right when you get on these little planes and, and all honestly, you don't want to, I don't want to be on it for a thousand fifty or thousand no, eighty. No. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> it's um, you know, there's you know, probably a better chance for I don't know about that, but you know, between brown bear or grizzly something negative happened, the bush plane is probably just as high as odds. Yeah. You know, and um how, how many guys do you normally go with? Like how many people are in the hunting party when usually you're doing that? Three's a good when you don't have a guide, three's good. Okay. So what we try to do is, um, you know, I did a float once, I think in 2006, we floated 100 and, 110 miles um, from drop off to pick up. And then I like the drop camps a little bit better. So you just hire an air taxi. And how, long it, how long did that float take you? Uh, I think 10 days. Yeah, about 10, 10 miles a day. Yeah, the thing I didn't like about it is you get a good spot. You know, you're like, oh, man, it's a good spot. You got to go. Yeah, and you, you're like, oh, man, you're looking at the map. And, and you, you know, you like, if you, you have st- to be there. Yeah, you, you, you stay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you might stay there two days, and, you know, third day, you got to make up time. You I, know, I had a buddy got flew out of one of them. Yeah, it's <sighs> that's yeah. aggressive, huh? Yeah. I, that was my very first, I think 2006 was my very first trip. Yeah. So uh, with, the, with the air taxi, you basically can pick one camp. And work from there? The float, you can float back. We floated back to, a, I wouldn't say a town, floated back to a, a gravel bar where they kind of picked you up. Yeah. And the drop camp, you picked the, the you just pick a lake. And you're just hiring a taxi. They are not a guy. They don't know. They're just uh, okay, an air. Okay. They're, like they're, a, they're plain junkies. Yeah, they're yeah. it's an Uber. Is it, what it yeah, does. They, yeah. They, okay. they, treat, they treat them little bush planes like Ubers. Like yeah. everybody's got their pilot's license in Alaska. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. A, that's how you get around up there. Yeah. And uh, you pick a lake and, you know, drop off and um, have him come back. That one guy said, said you got the date? You know, and they, they do this. You know, they're – he's like, yeah, yeah. And he had wrote it down on his hand. Yeah. And I was like, 14 days, right? I think that, that year was a 14-day trip because you can't hunt the day you come in. And obviously, the day you fly out, it's usually just tearing down. So yeah. it's a fourteen day. Trip. I didn't. I didn't know that. I I found that out this year that they've got a rule like that. Like it, once you land, you have to be there twenty four hours before you can hunt, don't you? Yeah, yeah. They don't want you circling around game and then just dropping you off. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So it makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So if you make weight, you know, they they will weigh you. If you're a thousand, I seen one guy who's a thousand ten. He's like, cut ten pounds. And I don't blame the pilot. You know, not only you're putting me and you. Him. Yeah, so you learn to pack very efficient. Um, you know, like the clothes you wear in, you're not taking multiple pairs of socks, you, you know, two or three. But it all, and you know, you got to take your rifle and your gun. You got to take the tent. Um, you know, your backpack, you know. Your, your pack is. Yeah, your pack, your food. Yeah. You know, your food, you know. Well, the food's probably one of the heaviest things. It, it is. We've I mean, got that first trip I was doing MREs uh, for people who don't know military ready to eat meals. Um, my goodness, back in early 2000s, those things were nasty. So <laughs> right now, you know, Chad Mendez, the, you know, MMA fire, he's got, you know, some dehydrated, you know, and the, the food has come a long ways. Uh, and um, the quick version of that, we take uh, tortillas pre-cooked bacon, uh, tuna in a pouch or chicken, you know, stuff that don't really need refrigerated. Right. The tuna, um, you know, throw in your pack, you know, like each morning, hey, you got the tortillas? Yeah, yeah. I got the tuna. And then um, try to munch on that, pre-cooked bacon, tuna in a pouch, maybe some mustard or something in there. Yeah. And then at night, um, you know, if you get back at midnight, and that's a lot of times you get back at midnight or, you know, two in the morning, it's just, um, you know, that might be your, we usually split a thing of instant mashed potatoes and a dehydrated meal and that's usually your calorie rebuild is that because you're burning a ton you lose weight so much i uh even this alaska trip i didn't hike as much this last alaska trip i but i think me and ollie was gone 
I think it was gone 14 days and I lost 11 pounds. The, the one, the 2012 trip, we was gr- aggressive. Um, I think we was camped at 8,400 when we was hiking to 10, eight every morning to find the elk, which is, took us three days to find them. And um, Matt shot a real nice five by five that trip. I ate, I ate tag sandwich, which a lot of times too, when you're going out West, it's not, I've been on six do it yourself hunts. I've shot one. So it's very hard, but um, to finish that Alaska, when you make weight, you know, you can pack a little bit, you know, so we'd take, you know, try to take some buck and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, so yeah. it does make the, you know, evening a little nice. Yeah. <laughs> the drop camps, I like those a little bit more. You're dropping off on a lake and then we try to have a good camp, you know, close to water because you're getting the water to boil and, and all that good stuff. And then we usually have a lookout. So if us three went, like I said, unguided, um, three is about perfect in my opinion. And we'll, um, one day we'll be like, say me and Gillum will be out and you'll be on your own. Me and him's out exploring, fishing, trying to catch, you know, supper. Hopefully you can catch mm-hmm. trout or, you know, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Pike or pikes harder to fillet, but you know, you'll take a pike. If that's all you got Yeah, to go with your ramen noodles or instant mashed potatoes. How would you fish? Did you have to pack that gear too? Pack that gear too. And you're taking, you know, five spoons, whatever. So if you lose a, <laughs> you lose a spoon, you're like, you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah. Man. And the, <laughs> so you're starving. Oh, yeah. losing spoons. Oh my. The first, you know, so that day you might what we what I call on point. So try to have a good lookout, you know, that's you know a couple hundred feet above camp. That you're, we call it the eye in the sky. You're up there. That's your quote unquote day off. You're on. We got handheld radios, you know. You're allowed to have those? Yeah. You can't use it for the aid, but, yeah, you yeah. know. Um, That's good. Yeah. So the guy up there is on the spotting scope, you know, and all that stuff, and that's his day off. And then, quote, day off. I shot my moose. I've done – I can't remember. I've got it blowed up on my wall how many days. I, I think it was 40 – I think it was 47 days in the bush over, you know, four different trips. To kill your moose. To kill one moose. And it's, you know, it's 54 inch Alaska, 54 inch wide Alaska, you call moose, you know, on myself, do it yourself. Bow. Uh, no, no, it's rifle. So that's another thing too. Bow's like, you know, to do something with a bow and I'm working. <laughs> you're Davy Crockett boys. Well, I mean, if you're out there killing, I'm oh serious my. to yeah. get out to Alaska and kill out stuff. I mean, with a bow, you, you're a hunter. Well, I mean, even out West, if you drop one of those big muleys or, or, or Elks. or an elk i mean elk how, how, do you, how do you get it out of there you, you well, quarter it right there don't you you're, I mean, yeah. you're hunting an animal that will hunt you back yeah the brown bear definitely will that's and why the moose moose are aggressive we've yeah. got some footage of that me and ollie call one in and you know they'll turn on you too because they they're uh they're aggressive but you know yeah you butcher it right on the spot yeah. Or, so, or out, yeah. yeah, you get your, you know, get your pictures and it's <laughs> <laughs> get your pictures. And, and it's game on, you know, yeah. and that's the thing about out West. Like if I, if say, you know, it's day three and Gillum shoots one, yeah. me and you, the next two or three days, it's, you know, it's team. We just, oh, yeah. they man up, you know, yeah. Start, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. start doing it. 50 pound packs in that terrain. So if you're seven miles in on a spike camp and you shoot one yep, and you got to get that thing back to the truck. You're you're fourteen round trip each time. That's why the whitetail hunters don't really know, you know, but it's a definite step. Fourteen up. miles. Yeah, and the one we shot in 2012, we got it back to Spike Camp, and we had a guy take us back in on horseback. So they do offer that to make make it a little easier. Is there some guys like running? You know, guys that's living around there. They're offering four wheeler help. Well, a lot of times you try not to go anything like that because yeah. it's easy, other hunters. It, it's easier access. So you want um, wilderness area, so it's just horses yeah. or on your feet. So you get aggressive people that's back in there. But yeah, you butcher it on the spot. You know that mule deer in 2018. Um, I shot with Monty, but um, I never ever would even had even a chance to shoot that deer without Monty's help. It was aggressive as you could get down in this hole, and you know we probably don't have time to get in today. But 
<laughs> it's all on your pack. You know, we let, like I said, we left a trailhead, I think that morning at 145 and we got back at like, like two, we was gone over 24 hours just <sighs> hiking and everything's on your back and didn't even get it. Didn't get it out. That was just us getting out. We just butchered it and, you know, hung it and all that good stuff. Then and, went back. Yep. Had, took the day off and put, I guess I ain't scared to Monty didn't, but I put Ben Gale over my legs and everything. <laughs> <laughs> we had a car with Monty, and he's got some good video of it. But yeah, so you had could a, bring it back to the camper. Yeah, we, we just got back to the camper, and then the next day we pretty much carb reloaded. Yeah. yeah. And then went back and got it. Because that's another good thing, too, about the meat. You know, it the aging process, especially if you get it in the shade and, huh. and in, a, in, a, in a canyon. You know, if there's a crick there, it's so much cooler than what people would think. Um, or, you know, if you put it in trash bags and put it in the water, you got to make sure that it's not a big clump of meat because inside the meat will stay warm, if you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. You got to kind of air it out. But that's another good thing, too, is burying, you know, put it in um, rivers. Tra trash bag and dump it in the river. Yeah. And you don't really have to worry about so much the scent as as much as it hanging, you know, black bear. And bear. Yeah, do, do you have problems with predation when you leave it like that? Like, you know, you do. a bear coming along and eating it? Or? Mm -hmm. You do. You got to hang it high. And then, I, you know, sometimes, too, like I shot a caribou in Alaska 2011, and we shot at 5.51 miles. We GPSed it from the tent. And all we did, it was, you know, we I knew we wouldn't get back. We got back at the tent at 3.30 in the morning. But this was maybe 8.45, 8.30. It's getting ready to get dark. And we just stripped the guts out of it. And me and my buddy, uh, Brian Runyon at the time, both of us took off our base layers, obviously with the most scent. And we tied it around his antlers and tied around his hoofs, both the front hoof, back hoof, and the antlers, just to try to keep the wolves and – you know, obviously brown bear and grizzly up there in Alaska. Um, and they left it alone. Okay. And uh, sometimes that works. My 2009 trip and uh, went to Frank Church Wilderness in Alaska, uh, Idaho, and tried that same stuff, but wolves got my uh, my mule deer I shot there. So They say the worst place you can be after you kill one is the, is the kill spot. Yeah. Because they say that they'll just, them wolves will just come in. Uh, Let's go to this brown bear, and then I want to talk about wolves. Okay. So the brown bear, this is kind of like the, like I said, my daughter, my oldest one was 21 or B21. Lakin's a senior. So I kind of knew I would, uh, like I said, I haven't, like I haven't hunted out west. I've done quite a bit, but I knew I was going to step it up when, you know, before I get. Some of these hunts obviously are aggressive. You don't want to do them when you're 80. You can't. You, you can't. You can't. Like yep. a 2025 or next fall, I'm doing a doll sheep, which is up, 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 up. <laughs> so I'm going to have to, you know, which I stay in shape now or try to, but I'm going to have to definitely, you know, step my game up. You just, you're not going to do those type of aggressive hunts. Like that guide 76 gave me obviously a lot of hope, and a lot of motivation, but, you know, he's an Alaskan guide he's the different he's the different little different, different breed yeah it? he's the david goggins of david yeah you know the lead of elite i'm gonna guess that he did not you would not guess that he's 76 years old. oh no <laughs> no i would I, i'd probably say 56 yeah. super you know nights in the tent or listen to him talk uh, uh george westcott was his name um he's guided on kodiak and the peninsula those and, people age differently in alaska he does a lot of um he's just active you know he's, yeah. if you've talked to you know i'm kind of inquisitive like this anti-aging is getting a little bit more into you know i see you working out stuff too and especially you know sauna and cold plunge i try to do all that but if you talk to anyone it's kind of aged well besides stress stress is a big part of it and uh, medications i think too I th I've, I've noticed i think certain medications have been aging me a little bit differently like okay. i'm on stuff for the gout and stuff for the high blood pressure and you know, I've noticed maybe a little bit of hair loss and stuff like that, and it might have come around with medication. Yeah. But he stays active, and if you see yeah. anyone, it's you know, man, how, what's your? They usually just stay active. So, so he's yeah. he did a lot of um, yeah, I guess in his fifties he was doing you know marathons and half marathons and stuff obviously, like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then obviously out hunting. Yeah. yeah. You know, like I said, I lost. I think I lost. I think I lost ten pounds on this brown bear trip. Well, it ain't like they're sitting around playing Xbox Live. 
Sometimes you're in a tent <laughs> when it gets nasty and you're just laying there for a day and just because you just, you know. Great place to gather your thoughts. Yeah. Like I said, that's yeah. the good thing about it is, you know, it, um, you're not running from like it's easy to run from your thoughts and anything. Maybe it's, excuse me, messing with you internally, anything you got bubbling up inside. It's real easy, especially nowadays with more distractions, to not really address um dress anything if you got anything burning inside anything internal in 14 days in alaska with just a sat phone that you know every couple days i call home check on the girls you're not really running from those thoughts you kind of get a chance to <laughs> work and, them out yeah and work them out figure out what's going and on and there are days like weather will keep you in the tent all it will, day it will just, it just will. lay there and i mean and this tent isn't the size of this room Oh, no, I wouldn't figure. It's just a one man, right, at that point. This this tent we had up here uh, for the brown bear hunt was a bigger one, but most of the time you're doing a three-person tent, and if you know what a three-person tent is, it's we're all Very like tight. that. Yeah. yeah. So, no, it's uh, the brown bear. So this trip was, has been planned for a while, which is another reason why I couldn't really get. And, you know, to go guided is definitely more expensive if there's a negative to – the positive is you kind of need it for, you know, dangerous game like that and the doll sheep up on mountains. The the average hunter from, you know, lower 48 don't really know what they're getting themselves into. Right, yeah. right. So to give, you know, to give them a little bit of uh, credit, it is probably well-deserved. Uh-huh. Alaska does a really good job, too, with their guide system, too. Like any, like Ohio, I was a whitetail guide for, you know, four or five years, but there's no... Um, anyone could really do it. There's no, oh, yeah. Alaska does a good job with you have, like Ian was the assistant guide. You got to be assistant guide for so many years and have so many documented hunts, not kills, hunts before you can be a guide. And then before you can own an outfitting business in Alaska, you've got to be assistant guide for so many years, a guide for so many years, and then own an outfit and be an outfitter. So to give Alaska some credit, they they do do it right, in my opinion, for the, mm-hmm. you know, and just like George, George was, you know, the lead of the lead. You're getting some really good quality guides that know their stuff up there, and for dangerous big game, you know, it's needed. I was very impressed with the overall, um, um, what do I want to say, wildlife um, officers. Like I, I was very like I, it was amazing to me to go to even out west and Alaska, but both of them have a huge like I want to I don't want to say uh, Smokey the Bear, but like you know they all have this huge um, presence of wildlife officers. Yeah, there's help. There is you know pe- they're keeping you in line. Uh, that I was just always impressed with the with the amount of with the amount of uh, actually the amount of commerce that that generated. I mean, I, I, that has to be the number one employer of of Alaska. I, is. Fi- I figured we'd get to this, but you said something about the wolf, so we'll yeah. hopefully knock this out real quick oh. and then get the brown bear. Yeah. But the conservation model, North America conservation model, has worked forever, and that's one thing if I could say that, uh, you know, I love seeing wolves. We have bobcats around here. I love my mem- I mean, I've seen bobcats. I've You know, I, I do so many hunting around here, spend so much time in the wilderness. Mm-hmm. I would know, you know, I'm yeah, not saying yeah, yeah. no one spends more time, in, but now I work for myself and kind of financially, you know, I have a lot more freedom that I don't, I'd be surprised at how many hours I spend watching wildlife. And I yeah. enjoy, if I couldn't hunt, I'd be a photographer. It's not Yeah, the, you just like being outside. I just like be seeing that, you know, I remember yeah. the first time I, how I got into seeing a squirrel and watching it crack a nut and that was my nickname forever. And if some people old school know, J Squirrel was my name because... Mm-hmm. I walked around like I was a squirrel busting nuts. So just the wildlife, <laughs> just the wildlife watching. I try to tell people that out west. You don't have to be a hunter. You just go no, out yeah, west yeah, yeah. and just just to see the mountains and be 75, 80 degrees and watching it snow at fourteen thousand. You're like, this is like, is this real? Am I yeah. in heaven? What's oh, this? Yeah. So to piggyback off that is, you've got these people that Gillum brings up a great point that. In each walk of life, you know, mine's like real estate, land. You know, my my business is real tree property, so I'm a land specific real estate agent. So white oak, red oak, property lines, not really a traditional mom and pa, your traditional agent. These people that go to school for that, you know, that are biologists, 
that's their cup of tea. That's yeah. their that's their like me going out west. That's the, what they want to do. They want to help wildlife. Yeah, and that's their you know their niche. Yeah, and they're passionate about it. And they've got schooling. Yeah. So why would you want you know they're putting stuff to popular vote town to say like Denver and you know people you, they're not in the wilderness. Yeah, and they and just like you, if you had heart problems, what do you want to do? You want to yeah. go see a heart specialist. Yeah, you want to go see a dentist. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. And that's probably my big kickback with the wolves and stuff like that. We all we're we're not as um, we're all conservationists. We're all love wildlife and stuff like that too. So I would you know you know I like to see when the state um, rely on the the professionals, the biologists. To make that, a good call. To, that's what they do. Yeah. That's what they do, you know. And I, it's not real complicated, you know. Like I said, if you had heart problems, you know, you'd want to go see a heart. You'd probably want to go to OSU Medical a Cleveland Clinic, uh, you know, uh, a heart doctor, not a general practitioner, yeah. not a dentist, not a real estate agent, yeah. not an yeah. insurance guy. Yeah. 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 I want to yeah. go, you know, and that's what these guys do. They've got, you know, they spend, and that's their cup of tea. So, yeah. You know, that's probably my big thing is I think we've went away sometimes. We went more emotional-based um, conservation and more. Did you see him hang me out to dry all you did on Facebook? No. You remember whatever I Oh, sh- God, he made him all mine. <laughs> oh, I shared this picture of this guy that had killed this mountain lion. Oh, Jesus. And I mean, that thing lit up. It had like 200-some comments. I I just took it down. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is I think most people missed the point. Yeah, I was just sharing that this guy, you know, I was just yeah. for guys like me and you that I, I'm a conservationist, okay? It was amazing the size of the thing. It was, just, it, it, it was, it was a cool it, picture. Yeah, it was a cool thing. And yeah. you know, I'm a hunter and, and I mean by these people lit this post up on me. Yeah. Some sometimes I mean, I don't know obviously, but you hear stuff too that sometimes that's probably just AI or just trolls out there. That Could be. Re- that really mm-hmm. don't have no intention. And there's probably people. Could you know, be. That, yeah. But uh, like anything, man, if, you know. Edu- you could have created a fake. This guy, this guy could have created. I didn't even research it that much. This guy could have created a whole Facebook thing mm-hmm. and just AI'd pictures just to get it. Looked a, real. And looked real. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy, man. That's yeah. crazy. So keep going. Sorry. So basically, that was basically it. You know, we've got away with with wolves, um, you know, out west and protected and all that stuff. And when you start, you know, digging in and why, you know, nothing against PETA and stuff like that. But when they, um, they're they getting paid to, you know, there's a – and I wish I could rattle it off the top of my head. But, you know, they're getting paid to protect these – species yeah you know and that's that's how their attorneys get paid and they get paid is just to keep it in court just just, to keep it just government money mm-hmm. trade hands do you yeah. know why we're bringing that up i don't they just reintroduced wolves into the colorado region oh okay and they were brought in from where canada yeah yeah, yeah. and, and give, keep going and that, so they they took them out there this group of biologists and this it was basically the wildlife division of, of Colorado. It was in Colorado and Utah, wasn't it? Yeah, Colorado is the big one right now. Yes, and so they turned out and they, they're tracking them. So they're 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 planting a wolf, and and they, there's plans on like thirty or forty more this year, and then every year they're going to reintroduce so many until there is a population there. What's the philosophy behind that? Uh, reintroduce the wolf. And you know now the the pushback. Did they, did they go extinct there or something, or were they were they ever there? They native? were they yeah. were ever there, and I believe there needs to be some wolves. But like anything, it needs managed. And right, so I hard can, to manage. That's the only there's a couple downfalls in my opinion. Now I, I I don't disagree with there needs to be some. Yeah, but that that's an animal that can reproduce very rapidly. They, yeah, they have big litters. And yeah, think about the predator. It's yeah. just us, and then obviously we're not allowed to hunt them. So yeah, you know ranchers and stuff like that kind of exterminated yeah. them. You know mm-hmm. I can't remember when, but they're not really endangered. It's like elks endangered in ohio there was elk here there, there was, was elk in jackson i, I read yeah. that today yeah mm-hmm. yeah jackson's yeah. neat you know just like right here wesley powell john wesley powell, yeah whatever there's yeah. a lot of history right here and huh. there i read that in bob Irvin's book gibson brought it home from his school library yeah and uh this was very well known for elk hunting yep. probably not did not realize that now yeah. if you introduce elk here now never uh, you know, are they could, gonna make could it they? could they 
Uh, they're they're too big. They're, they um, need too much country. But, yeah, but and like too much it, people with traffic. Yeah, they would. Yeah. They would but like with them. with the uh, with this in Colorado, I mean, when you introduce like a, an apex predator like that, a real one. Yeah, like what? I, I mean, what? I don't understand what the philosophy behind that would be because that that's going to have a pretty good. It's going to have a pretty devastating effect on probably elk. Elk, um, mule deer, mule deer, any, yeah. Any of the ungulates that can't yeah. really protect herself. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's I think that's the process behind it. It's more than just you know anti hunting. You know, tags are going to to kind of finish this or piggyback yeah. what he brought up. He was impressed, especially coming with someone that you don't really hunt, but you're kind of well, uh, hunt. yeah. I you mean, know, you know enough about yeah, it. Yeah. You know that when you went out west, and you've seen all the um, mm-hmm. integrity behind. It, if you want to use, that yeah, word. yeah, 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 yeah. And he was impressed Good work, with it. Yeah. And mm-hmm. um, good word to use, and uh, you know the the financial impact to, to try to give this some relevance. Like California outlawed mountain lions. Mm-hmm. At the time, mountain lion hunt was like four thousand. So if I wanted to go to color or California hunt mountain lion, I would pay a Jason Gillum or an outfitter yeah. out there for, and I would stay in the hotel or maybe go mm-hmm. out to the eat and the the, the, Get the, the, fin- the mm-hmm. financial piece that he's yeah. talking sure. about. Sure. Now they pay sharpshooters four thousand dollars. So they took something it takes like, up a mile there. Yeah, to take them out of there because <laughs> nothing's so yeah. it, it just makes you know, makes it just shifts. It, it causes yeah. waves is all it does. You, you know? take an at something off the asset side of the balance sheet and put it on the liability side. Instead yeah, of yeah, revenue yeah. a revenue generating sport, sound conservation mm-hmm. management from um, biologist people that are smarter than me and you in that niche right and you put it over on the uh, liability side and it's an expense color sure. colorado is sure. almost becoming i mean there i think there's times like bow season and stuff that it's, it's still going to be really good to hunt because it's so vast yeah but they say i've been researching these rifle hunts a lot and we, there was there was a plan that we were going to try to get this hunt out there but what for what i'm seeing colorado just looks it looks as crowded as anywhere in the united states now during gun season during the rifle seasons it is it's getting harder you know population's yeah. going up and then yeah i mean it's it's getting to be hunted out yeah i, I, I should say and, and wolves will make just make it worse. yes yeah. yeah wolves are not going to help that any plus the the rising you know you've got a rising amount of hunters coming up i would say i, I bet tags and things are up you know yeah that's starting to be a bigger thing yeah. it's more attainable yeah so let's go back to this brown bear hunt. So tell me about the kill. Yeah, how how did you find it? Well, how yeah. did it go? So we um we flew in. I think we had five different plays in getting in. The coming in, we flew into King Salmon was probably the last town. And that night we're coming in. You know, the planes. This was a a bigger like commercial plane. This one wasn't a small one. And they banked the wrong way, and I went, "That's weird," you know. And they did two or three circles. Excuse me, and long story short, there was a volcano that we thought erupted, but obviously it didn't. It just rumbles, and they give off volcanic ashes. Yeah. And that's real hard, obviously, to take the plane, you know, because the the soot or something. Yeah, pressure. The acidity level in it. So they had to take us back to Anchorage, you know, drop us off for another day. So the next day we go out, land there, and then we meet. The air taxi was supposed to just take us out to the, um, you know, out to. So the, you went from Anchorage to what? King, where can I? King to, Salmon. To King Salmon, which would have been south of south Anchorage. What, uh, southwest, mainly west. Okay. Yeah, and then um, there we hopped on uh, um, a smaller plane, just a like a three four person plane, to get out into the bush. You know, obviously all dirt airstrip, and then met the outfitter out there and um had a little camp there then we hopped on to a uh, a tundra plane and uh, uh got good video of this so um this is uh, i told the girls my daughters I says a two person you know plane she's like oh so you and ollie i was like no pilot and ollie <laughs> <laughs> so you're sitting like this right beside the pilot and we'll get to watch him do that and it's pretty cool because they just land they land on dirt airstrips they land it's not i would say airstrip they just land on mountaintops or gravel bars somewhere flat somewhere that they can get those big tundra tires to um 
too flop down. So that's another reason too. I've done I did a lot of those hunts, you know, when I was younger, but I'm wanting something, you know, more memories and that yeah. was part of it. So about Ollie is uh I hired him a couple years ago as a real estate agent and um he had quit his nursing job and was putting sold his house and, you know, moved back in with his mom and dad, built like a you know, like living in the garage. So he kind of was wanting it. Yeah, and I'm glad it worked out for him too. Was putting you know stuff on credit card to make it buy. So I obviously helped him get started, but he did a lot of it himself. But come to find out, and I knew he was a hunter, and it does help. You don't have to be a hunter to be more of a land agent, but you do have to be. You know, we wear tick clothes. You know, I'm out in the woods all the time. Totally different type of real estate agent than your traditional, you know, khakis and a sports shirt. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. And, and it's fine. But Ollie earned it. But what I found out you know he did some camera and he's very uh, i'm i really am poor at this but very tech savvy with social media and all that stuff so he started doing our drone footage for our listings which obviously help if you can see you sure. know an 80 acre farm from the air sure and, and and he had videotaped and you know some other hunts and i was like man this is perfect so uh -huh. ollie you know i told him you know all expense trade you know you can make, you know, YouTube or whatever you want to do, you know, try to get some revenue there that way. So I have Ollie along on this trip. So Ollie went out first with the pilot and just to get dropped off. And then, you know, they just shuttle you. And then when they dropped me off, then the guide was already out there. And then this was a, this was a little bit bigger tent. Um, but we was all kind of in the same tent, kind of sandwiched in there. So that kind of started the hunt um pretty good weather for alaska and um the first uh i don't i can't remember what it was the first night but things are freezing up on you it happens you know and uh we go out pretty much every day on that they put me at that spot because i this was started out as a bow trip because i wanted to shoot one with a bow and um ended up shooting mine with a rifle and we'll probably get into that but Hey guys, while we're paying the bills, let's talk about one of our oldest uh, sponsors that's been with us since the beginning, Geiger Brothers. Geiger Brothers is headquartered in Jackson, Ohio, with offices in Columbus, Ohio, and Knoxville, Tennessee. We provide construction services in Ohio, Kentucky, West Virginia, and Tennessee. A veteran and dynamic staff of talented people symbolic of our 100-year history of success, gives Geiger Brothers a distinct advantage. Leveraging that experience for our customers allows us the ability to provide consistent and superior performance for their construction, engineering, and fabrication needs. And hey, we've had several of these guys on our shows. Uh, Scott Massey, Kyle Hickey, Shea Meredith, just to name a few, go back, look through some of the old episodes and get to know them. It's a great group of people that have been with us for a long time, and we certainly appreciate it. So enjoy tonight's show, courtesy of Geiger, Geiger Brothers here in Jackson. I uh, They put me up on this spot because it was a little bit more elevation so we could kind of, you know, get the glass on it and then plant a stock from there. So with the reason I did the fall hunt is, one, I wanted to always see the – I wanted to see that salmon – the salmon migration and it was something to behold to see those the amount of salmon in these streams and and yeah. the the collars they're orange where they're, yeah don't they start turning red there when yeah, they're getting they, ready to breed and yeah, die or they, what? they die and yeah. that's the yeah. are they are you catching them you're catching them at the beginning aren't you at the beginning of what the migration yeah where then where you would have been wouldn't that have been the first spot and don't they spend all winter or all how, how's that work they usually come up from the ocean Yes. And then they're changing colors when they're dying. Mm -hmm. So they die usually, you know, and the, and the, the bears are feeding on them. As, as they're dying. Yeah, mm -hmm. and as they're getting ready to go hibernate. That's what keeps that whole. But you would, how many, I wonder how, many, how long would that have taken that same group of salmon to get to Fairbanks? I don't know. In the northeastern. Because they're they're going up those same rivers. They go up in there in, in the high end and die. Yeah, that that's something to, like I said, you know, the, I've seen the caribou migration in 2013 up above uh, Brooks Range. That's something to behold to see 10, 15,000 animals migrate. Mm -hmm. But to piggyback off that, 
you know, again, it's the wildlife. It's just to see that. They were in Denali by July. I was in Denali in July, and there was a run of salmon coming through Denali. Yeah, yeah it's, it's amazing to see that and to see the wildlife, you know, the bears in there fishing. So yeah. that was awesome to get a chance to see that. But the, what we started figuring out, and it took us maybe five, six days, you know, so getting up in the morning, he really didn't get up crazy early because it was, you know, nasty cold. You know, it's 12 degrees. Um, getting out of the tent without wind chill and, you know, breaking some, um, you know, getting your water and stuff like that. Going. Snow? Snow at times. But the biggest thing on this hunt, and this is the worst I've ever seen in Alaska. You know, you just, Alaska is its own animal. It's it just, like I said, it just wears on you. And I t- tried to tell Ollie that. And if you talk to him or hear him say he didn't have a clue, and he's a hunter. Yeah. Ollie's a whitetail hunter around here. and he, yeah. But he kind of, he went from, he bypassed, he went out west once. He kind of bypassed a step. <laughs> yeah. He went from West, you know, Ohio whitetail hunting to Alaska. Alaska brown bear flying in. That's that's hunting. intense. That's yeah, a big he, jump. Yeah, he he he's missed some steps there. So yeah. he got his nose open a little bit, but it was good, you know. So well, to give you a funny story there. So <laughs> he got his nose open. it uh <laughs> it was a bow hunt, you know, and I took my bow and I put new strings on, I shot all summer and was, you know, had my sights dialed in, was shooting out to 85, 90 yards, even though uh, ethically it's not really, you practice longer so the shorter shots feel, you know, easier. Yeah. And um, Ollie, like it was a 21-day hunt, and, um, you know, if I needed it because it was an expensive hunt and I was going, you know, on uh, um, taking my bow. So all summer Ollie's like, hey, you know, you better at least give it, you know, at least half. You better give at least 10, 12 days to the bow. So, you know, it's the plan, you know, it's, Things happen, you know, you never, you know, whatever. It was day two. I get up, my boat's hanging above me, and it's freezing, and, the, you know, and I get up to reach to get my bow, so I can, you know, out of the, you know, because you're cramped in there. Yeah. And to move it out of my way, and Ollie goes, you're not taking the bow, are you? I said, buddy, what happened? What happened to day two? Because, it, like I said, it just wears on you. It's hard. Yeah. To, I can't, as much as I say that, you know, we're setting in nice, warm atmosphere tonight drinking ski and unsweet tea <laughs> yeah. it just wears on you it yeah, just it wears it. and uh so the option was you know always there for a rifle but started out as a bow hunt and they gave me this camp that i had a little bit more elevation which obviously i liked so the idea which is why i did the fall hunt instead of a spring i wanted to see that migration and it was something to behold the the salmon and to watch nature the brown bear in there and you know, um, a sow and cub standing in who knows how cold the water is, you know, and just the, it was just, it, that part was awesome. But the reason they gave me that camp is one, you could get, you know, a good spot and then plan your stock to get in with a bow and obviously have the wind right and get on one side of the creek or the other, you know, why they are preoccupied in there chasing salmon and all that yeah. stuff which is primarily the best way to do it with a bow um, if you were going to be, you know, lucky enough to shoot one with a bow. And that's what I wanted. So, But what we come to find out is the weather started turning and um, we started piecing this together after, you know, maybe five, six days. I think we've seen 23 brown bear in like seven days. 22 of the 23 fished their way up up river and was gone and what that means was you know we was it was 40 mile per hour winds and 70 mile per hour gusts so a lot of times the pilots like when i shot there was like two or three days before they, they could even fly in and get you they were going to migrate they were going to hibernate it was more they wasn't really on a little salmon you know because the salmon get in rapids they weren't chilling they weren't in there fishing. They were a little bit. By the time you said, ah, that's a good one. That's a, you know, you can't shoot sow and the cubs. Great rule, obviously. And then you're trying to, that hunt, was, which is the reason I picked it, they're the biggest of the bears. And I, obviously, to try to get a 10-footer is, you know, kind of rare. But I wanted something, you know, 9-foot or, you know, bigger, you know, and an older species, which is another thing with conservation. We're not... That's the whole idea behind it. You're trying to shoot an older before male. Before suffers. An older male species before their tooth wear, before Mother Nature takes the nastiness, yeah. and you're getting, yeah. you know, an older male species out of 
um, the herd or the environment. So I wanted a nine footer and, um, so I'm taking a bow with me every day and the guide has a three, seven, five, obviously I've never shot, but there's, and the guide has to have the uh, gun and the assistant guide has to have a gun. That's just the way it works up there. Fair enough. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Especially if I'm doing the bow because yeah. the deal was Ollie was going to be third. So I'm obviously first. Not the no offense, Ian. <laughs> he Ian is ex military. I mean, stacked. You know, and yeah. he he he's going to be a great. He was a great guide, uh, but George was backup. <laughs> George was right behind me, and we didn't really get on a whole lot of stocks that was that aggressive, intense. And I didn't really want to be no closer than forty, just for safety yeah. reasons. Fair. And um, but I wanted George right off my shoulder, locked and loaded, and then Ollie third. We didn't really get to a whole lot of that stuff because the weather was just nasty. It, it was the wind. I mean, I've so been, is that is that what led to the decision to say, "Hey, look, I'm I'm gonna hang out the bow." Yes, and absolutely. go with it. It, it, with the wind or what was the I the mean, cold? I've been on trips that just stupid, nasty cold. You know, mm-hmm. four degrees in the mornings. Yeah, this was twelve without wind chill, mm-hmm. and like I said, there was when it would gust, you would it would almost knock you over legitimate 40 all day and the guide obviously he, we figured out he you know this is i think i was his 120th brown bear kill oh my the 76 year georges and so he was it, it, man it was just awesome in every territory you know to spend time in a tent with someone 76 year old man you know when you're 76 hopefully we live that long you're gonna have some stories and a seventy-six-year-old brown bear guide from Alaska, <laughs> and humble, super humble. <clears throat> um, but that was the idea behind it. Is so we're piecing this together as you know the weather's changing. It's getting colder. It's windy. They're not really you know hung up on a hole, yeah, and fishing and kind of taking their time, yeah. where I can come off the mountain and get in there and oh, get right. a good stock by yeah. the time they're up, gone, yeah. And, Excuse me. Not one did we see coming downstream. So the oceans out here, as they come up to hibernate, they hibernate more in the mountains or the base of the mountains yeah. where they can get underneath the rock or down in the ground, obviously, where they hibernate. So it, was, it sounds easier to you know hear that I'm saying it, but this took it some time to kind of piece this together. And this time, I'm getting worried about eating a tag sandwich, you know, it's yeah, day like yeah. seven or so, and there's no... Um, I don't know, no, like, less glory or however you want to say it by shooting one with a gun. Well, no, no. You no. know, Alaska, you know, the biologist told me this. I stole it off of him in 2006 or eight. I was researching the unit I drawed, and he was super nice. And I said, oh, and he goes, hey, you say you was from Indiana? I said, no, Ohio, sir. And he's like, well, give you some perspective. That unit you drawed is the size of Indiana, and there's five hunters in it. <laughs> I was like, I got you. Yeah, yeah I got gotcha. you. Yeah, and then yeah. he's like, and he, I can't remember what the biologist's name was. And he said, you know how everyone says everything's bigger in Texas? You could cut Alaska in half, and Texas would be the third biggest state. There so you. it's really, you know, to shoot one with a gun, it's not like there's no, oh, I would have shot with a bow. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. You're, oh, yeah. yeah. You're, <laughs> it, again, it's hard for people around here. You know, And, and, and like, did, did the guide, uh, George, did he – did he kind of lead you in the direction like, hey, man, you may want to may want to hang the bow up? George was good in that aspect. He did not push anything he on didn't. you. He okay. did not push anything on you. And the reason they had George, because I was the bow hunter, and they wanted, obviously, the more experienced guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a chance that it could turn okay. dangerous. And that's yeah. probably one thing walking away from that. Elk was my number one species. Probably, I don't know, I'd say brown bears tied it now, but... That's the first animal that I ever – moose can – but moose ain't really – that's the first animal that you feel um, a different uh, – scared maybe, I guess, just to be mm-hmm. honest. I'm yeah. I mean, I, I, I've done some aggressive hunts, but I'm also human. Well, it's sure. the first animal that you're like, this is – I want to make sure I – Yeah, that thing takes off running at yeah, me. Especially, <laughs> yeah. with, especially with a buck. Yeah, oh, yeah. And George is like saying, he's, I think he said that they could run a football field in six seconds. But we get more to it when I walk up on, on the, just the immense size. And um, so we're starting to piece this together. I'm getting a little worried. The weather's turning. It's not really the cold. Like I said, I've been on a lot of Alaska hunts, just nasty, freezing, 
that, you know, four degrees, negative four, I think was a couple nights there. And we was 12, but it was still nasty without the wind. The wind was, this is the most wind in this, the, the peninsula is kind of known for that. Wow. Uh, and Kodiak Island, the peninsula is basically right across from Kodiak. But I start getting a little nervous, and, um, you know, our numbers are – we're not seeing as many. They're definitely – the stocks are not there. And, you know, a lot of times, too, you're out there, you know, 10, 12 hours glassing, and it's freezing, you know, like, um, you know, you'll take turns, maybe go take a little walk, and you don't really go too far or yeah. take a gun with you. Yeah. You know, I was doing push-ups and sit-ups, trying to stay warm, and then come back. And then you're trying to nap a little bit too. But you're um, cold. It you're just cold. You're that's why I say when I say it wears on you, you're never really like comfortable. Just build a fire. Yeah. yeah, at night we'd come in, you know, and had like a little uh, cook stove in there, a little small cook in stove a tent. in a tent. That would warm it up. And that's another thing too to go my do-it-yourself hunts. I mean. It's just you, you know, and we'd had try to have a fire out, but sometimes you get back at the tent, you just go right in the bag. Yeah, and it, it's it just wears. The fire on. can be more hassle than it's worth. You, you don't want to mess with it. Yeah, I just want my sleep. Yeah, I just want to yeah. get in bed and let's yeah. go to sleep. And you get your little, you know, jet boil and get your, you know, as you're laying in your sleeping bag trying to get warm and eating, you know, mashed potatoes or something. So it that's it's it's hard to really you don't I could no matter if I was Lou Holtz or any type of great communicator i could never give it any justice it just wears on you it's just uh just wears on you being cold and you know not well for, probably like physically and mentally physically mentally you're 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 exhausted you're hiking you're out of your element you're cold sleeping sleeping bag you get a little negative you got to watch that sometimes too and yeah. um you know what you wear uh i wear a lot of qu stuff so um it's kind of primarily you know made for western alaska but like I said, this was a an, an audio test of this. The 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 wind, as much as the and the camos come a long way. The you know, uh, the wool and Did some you of like this. the QU? Yeah, yeah. But you have to layer with it because it's made. Because a lot of times the bad thing about it is you put on something real big and heavy, but you're hiking, then you're sweating, and so you have to kind of layer with some of these Sitka and QU. And I did not have like I thought the again I've done six trips in alaska do it yourself i never had i've never experienced 40 mile per hour winds all day every day oh, gust yeah. of 70 you know ollie's got video of me walking and it's I'm like geez it's it's the wind was just um it's you know people with all 40 70 it's i never really experienced 70 mile per hour and this is all coming from the oh, guide he yeah. he's got you know who's 76 has been there done that oh yeah so it wears on you. I'm getting a little worried about eating a tag sandwich, expensive hunt, obviously no harm. And, that, and that's another thing, too. Like around here, you're hunting 80 acres or 100 acres. The the guys up there, it's the guy, the, the guide had five hunters in, and he had, man, I think he, I'll butcher it, I think he had 260,000 square miles. To slow that down, that's not 260,000 acres. Two hundred and sixty thousand <laughs> times six hundred and forty. Jackson yeah. and Vinton County are both five to hundred to five fifty. One, I think Jackson's five fifty four and Vinton's five thirty two square miles. Yeah. So, yeah, great stat. Give it some yeah. perspective, and people yeah. are like, "Oh man, you got forty acre track? Can I hunt?" Yeah, it's it's it's, <laughs> it's you can't. It's, it's super it's hard. It's huge. Yeah. It's so big. It's so big and vast. Like I said, when I was telling Lacey, it'll be six days. She's like, "What? I'll be six days before I get out of here." It's and. To you know, to finish maybe that thought on the bow, it, there's no shame. You know, a lot of my wife, like my my moose, was a rifle kill. I did you know four or five different forty seven days or whatever it was in the bush. So, um, I like, hey man, if it if it works out, you know, I'm still taking my bow. Yeah, yeah. And that one, the morning I shot shot it, um, I can't remember what day it was. That's another thing; things just blend together, but. Yeah. Might have been day eight or whatever nine, and um, we as we leave the tent, there was a lookout that we always hit, and, and kind of spent ten fifteen minutes, and then we got down to our best lookout as we're watching, you know, maybe they come up of the other one. Yeah, as they come up the, they're using that yeah. river as a travel yeah. corridor, and they're fishing, mm -hmm. and you know, 
eating the salmon. But excuse me, but we always went up here to check up river first before we went down to our best lookout, which was maybe a couple hundred yards away, watching from the ocean as the bear should be coming. A lot of times you'll catch way, oh yeah, you see it. He should in the half hour, forty five minutes later, there's the bear kinda up where you can kinda glass him. And we had a, you know, I had my spotting scope set up and I had an attachment on my phone to where it clicks in the spotting scope, it, you know, and that's where I, hopefully you can show some good footage there yeah. that you're watching and that's where you're kind of judging the bear as they get closer. But even then they're, you know, I shot my, I shot my bear at 178. Um, 178 yards. 178 yards. But so that was the style. But that morning that I had, had um, we had went out, it was, I was last that morning, so we was all walking, like, in a line, you know, mm-hmm. five, ten yards apart, and George just got to left, Ian just got to left, Ollie cut to left, and I was like, oh, man, I can't, I ain't getting, you know, lazy, so I went up, and um, it was super windy that morning, and um, I went up to the lookout, and I'm trying, obviously, if you look in the wind, your eyes are water, it don't take long, so I'm trying to look through my binos, and, and, uh, I don't sit there long because it's just you're, you're you're right in the wind, which is why they didn't go there. Yeah. We had our lookout was in a little bit of a cut, and we kind of was we had got down in there, and you could get out of the wind just a little bit instead of that, you know, something. I, it, 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 it's it's horrible, man. Yeah. You know, ten hours of forty mile per hour, you're like, I oh, just get me out of this. Yeah, and then yeah. The, it's exhausting. And then in the tent, you know, all night. That's what Ollie said. He said, I slept like I said, man, I sleep good sometimes, but. You hear that all you it, the wind never stopped, and it wasn't yeah. like oh it's twenty miles today. It was forty every day. Wow. <laughs> Gus, it was just the tent is all the t- yeah all, yeah, all the time. Yeah. yeah, you're still getting breeze to it. Yeah, and and, and you are sleeping in sleeping bags, shivering, and you know. Uh. But so I go up to that you know to that lookout, and I'm not there that long, and I catch you know something dark coming down. And I just got my binos up, got a good enough look to to see it was, you know, see it was a brown bear and looked pretty big. You know, granted, I'd only seen 22 at that time. But there's a difference between a, a sow yeah. and a boar and a definitely a difference between, you know, we seen one, we called him Scarface. Hopefully you can show a picture of him. He's got a big old scar on his nose. He was a 10-footer regardless. When you see something like that, you're like, oh, that's – and this one looked like it was different. Yeah. But my eyes are watering, whatever. And so I go running back down. And by that time, we, you get a little bit more comfortable, which is bad. There's already down to – and I just have my bow. There's already down to lookout about a couple hundred yards away. I should have had a gun with me. Yeah. But I go running back down. And I say, George, I think I got – you know, so we kind of all go back up. We spot it. And I'm thinking it's getting ready to happen. So – Ollie's trying to videotape, but this time too, I'm not really doing the video for financial incentive. I'm just trying to capture. Right, right. I've done so many hunts that you just want to well, a memorable. Up. Yeah, you nailed yeah, it. Yeah, and I, I'm like, oh, and I, sometimes I get and I'm drinking with a buddy that would. You remember that? And like, I do. I yeah, do. I, <laughs> yeah. Know, like the Northern Lights. Runyon, yeah, Runyon got me out of the tent a couple of times. Northern yeah. Lights. I'm glad he did. Yeah. You know, because it's freezing. Like I've seen the Northern Lights, and yeah. they're they're off the charts good, but. He Runyon got you know ripped me out of sleeping bag one night. Yeah, yeah, it was freezing. I was like, oh, it was. But I want more of that type sure, of memories sure. too. Yeah, yeah. You know, versus just some pictures. You yeah. know, because you you do lose it. Yeah. So, but at that time, I'm not. I'm like, I don't really care if Ollie. Ollie's job is get on video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my job, my job is to, is to kill this bear. Kill it. Yeah. You, know, you stay in your lane. I'm staying in mine. Yeah, yeah. And Ollie, Ollie's great because Ollie's a hunter. So yeah. it worked out great. You know, one, he's earned his you know, earned his position, you know, with what he's done, but yeah. you know, he's already a hunter and he, and, um, he's super tech savvy with this, like that, that mm. trailer. Hopefully you showed the trailer. Yeah. I, I took that. That was awesome. Yeah. I had nothing to do with that. And all yeah. did that. And then I think he sent, sent me, I was like, I don't, you know, you're the art, which Ollie's good. You know, he, mm. he like, he was asking me, but he was, you know, trying to be proud of it as he's yeah. doing that. And I'm like, I, I'm not going to, you know, I come like I've come to you. I'll come to you for insurance advice. Sure. Yeah, I'm not here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, what about this? Yeah. 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 And Ollie's just, he's got, um, you know, he's got some weaknesses in his personality. He's got ADD real bad. And I guess, Ollie, did you call that person back? But he's kind of a storyteller type stuff. I'm not 
that's not me. And I had nothing to do with that. Was What's the cool, your plan for this uh, video? He's going to try. The, the, the deal is, and I, you know, nowadays, too, the younger generation is a little bit more. And I'm pra- Jason Prater is one of my good friends. He says I'm not as bad as what I give myself credit for. I'm just not really interested in that. I'm kind of an introvert social media. I, I, I'm on Facebook a little bit and Instagram, but TikTok and all that stuff, you know, I'm not. I, 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 I'm trying to embrace it, but it's not really what I like. Mm-hmm. And obviously the younger generations are more in tune with, you know, generating revenue, which is, you know, sure. YouTube and in oh, yeah. different ways than just mm-hmm. get up and work eight to five, you know. Oh, so, there's, so, there's so many Well, and there'll be, I mean, there's so many people that would watch that it, uh, and be interested in it. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing too, though. And, and some of these hunts I've got booked – they're world class. Like this year, me and Ollie's going to Sitka Island in Alaska on a mountain goat hunt. So they're not like your. So you're going to try to start a show. I'm going to let Ollie kind of run it. Mm-hmm. And obviously, I'm the one that's paying for the hunts. It'll be uh-huh. a good channel. Yeah. And, and we'll probably do. He started one land hunt media. It's his media company. But I don't want to steal his thunder because just like that, to finish that thought on that. Um, I'd, that watch tra- it. I'd watch that. I'd watch it. That trailer. I was like, oh, my God, that's, you know, and it was cool because, yes, I'm the hunter. Very yeah. well produced. I didn't have nothing to do with that. Yeah. And that was what was neat about mm-hmm. it. It wasn't like I was getting. I did. Yeah. That was the first thing I, I noticed. Yeah. I thought, well, this is a legit video. Like This guy's good. Yeah, this guy's yeah. good. This isn't, you didn't do this. Oh, it stood just, out. It didn't look yeah. like any fly-by-night operation. Yeah. No, this isn't an Instagram reel. This, uh-uh. is, this is a show. So, yeah, I think, I think, you know, like anything, humble beginnings, but. We'll probably do something 50 50 or so. I don't really care. I don't, I'm, I mean, you know, but wanna, you're, you better have like that's a that's a strategic plan that you, I mean, you or, could roll it out. It's just how do you do it? Hey guys, let's pay some bills here. Tonight's show is brought to you by the Kelly Wiley Group of Keller Williams Excel Realty. I tell you, we, we all know Kelly and we all know the group down at Kelly Wiley Realty. And I'm telling you, you won't find a better class of people to deal with. They a verifiable fact, something that I found very interesting. They are the number one real estate agency in Southern Ohio, and it doesn't shock me. I tell you, there's 180 different items that a home buyer and a home seller must do whenever you buy or sell a house. The Kelly Wiley team is great at all of them. They will help you out from start to finish. They have some of the most up-to-date processes and systems that you can possibly dream of. You're going to love the whole entire experience. So if I were you, I would give those guys a call at 740-577-3795. That's 740-577-3795. Or you can also look at all of their inventory at kellywileygroup.com. I'm going to let him call a lot of the shots. Sure. Just, you know, that's his, just like I said earlier with a, a heart, you know, or the wolves or the, an insurance, you want someone. And that's one thing I so found. L- with, like when you go, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go yeah. ahead and finish. Well, one thing I found in, in life is if you find someone, you've got strengths. I've got strengths. You've got, we've got weaknesses. Sure. If you find someone's strength, you hire them and you let them do them. That's and right. let them make you money or, you know, put yeah. them in a position to be successful. Absolutely. Based, and don't try to change them. Try to maybe a little bit. Let them run. Yeah, and let them do their thing. Let them do you. That's so. a, that's a, that was the old Western Southern philosophy. They always mm-hmm. said you should be holding on to these agents' mm-hmm. legs while they're, as they're walking out the door begging them to stay because they're good at something. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Everybody is, everybody's good at something. Oh, heck, yeah. Uh, he did a good job on that. That video is really good. So, so give me an idea here. Like when you guys are out on this hunt and you're talking about right now, you, you were at the lookout. Now you're, you're getting down there. You're telling him, make sure you get this on. Is he pretty much filming everything? I mean, he's probably got hours of video footage on, on him. Yeah. He, he How got many batteries. How many cameras? I mean, well, we upgraded his equipment too this year too. So that's why. And, and again, when it comes to finances, especially where I'm okay financially in other areas, I upgraded all of his equipment this year. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So the hunt's free for him. It's not really a hunt, but mm-hmm. all expense fits trade. He gets to, you know, go on some world-class adventures. Plus, yeah. this is his cup of tea, too. Sure. So oh, yeah. this is yeah. what he yeah. likes yeah. doing. Yeah. Was this no. GoPros? Was this drones? Oh, man, I'd be afraid Ollie had freaking much, <laughs> you know. But, no, but it, was, we, it was quality stuff. He'll yeah. be the next guest. Yeah. yeah. So he, <laughs> it was quality stuff. We upgraded some of his equipment. We rented, which was cool nowadays. You rent some of this high-dollar stuff. Yeah. yeah. We rented some of those and loaded down the SD cards and shotgun mics. How, how, do, you, do you have any idea on how, how many batteries? And I think we took 12 batteries. 
12 batteries and how do you know how many cameras we had two one backup one. again i called ollie this is i wouldn't be able to tell you what you do or don't need i just told him don't fuck yourself. yeah <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. yeah yeah i'll go through a battery in a in a race i'll go through one yeah. battery in one of the mountain bike races yeah. one thing he did do good because each time we went back to the tent at night he would drop the footage onto another SD card and never let save it. Yep. To save it that way, it's it's, it's gold. always there. It's golden. Mm -hmm. So, and he had done. I think he did one other hunt out west for a guy elk where'd hunting. Where did he get that power? I don't know. Did he hit? No, I mean like like electric power. Where did he get? We had um, solar. A, we had a solar thing too. Now, obviously, the batteries are all charged, but we had a solar mat too that we was trying to. Solar. Yeah, that's becoming a hot thing. That solar mat. Yeah, yeah. You so, seen them? Yeah. The yeah. guys are just throwing them out, and that's their electric out portable. Yeah. yeah. That's why I think it's cool about it is because, yeah, I get a um, one, what I just wanted. I just wanted something to remember the hunt, you know, especially if I maybe grandkids or something watch or whatever. Just remember. Yeah, sure. Um, but there's another part of it that someone's uni uniquely talented. It's not me uh, getting my rocks off. I'm on TV, whatever yeah. that is. It's someone showcasing – and when you start learning that little niche of that, like we talked earlier, mm -hmm. there's different niches everywhere. Mm -hmm. there, you know, there's experts in their own field. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you could talk forever what you do and the uniqueness of it. And it's like, wow, Ollie's good at that stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, to see him do that was pretty cool. But that that trailer, I had nothing to do with it. And then it mm -hmm. was done. I was like, oh, my God, dude. But <laughs> I didn't. Uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I, mean. I didn't have nothing to do with it. So to see um, see him do that, but yeah, he's at that time. I'm not really communicating with him. It's not. It was you were getting dialed in. Yeah, it's not when you're in that kind of. It's, it's not. I mean, maybe some. Did shows. the adrenaline start to pump a little Absolutely. bit? You a little in adrenaline dump when you saw that bear? Absolutely, because and Ollie, I haven't seen the all the audio and all this stuff, and I hope he got it. But he claims mm -hmm. he did. But when I'm getting ready to shoot. We'll talk about here in a little bit. The George come down and Gate said something in my ear, and I was like, "Oh my God, can, you know, leave me alone, George." I'm kind. Of, so, <laughs> by all means, you're trying to judge, um, you know, for trophy size. Sure. You're freezing. So I mean, yeah. that you're already shaking. Yeah. Your eyes are watering because of the wind, and I'm I'm looking kind of into the wind, and. So that that bear that I shot to get back on that is it's it's coming down river and I'm like oh my goodness so and, but we had our best lookout spot had the closest turn so once you drop off down in the alders you're done you're ten twelve foot and you're in you're, you're in bear country there yeah so you you have to, to before you get to the river to do your stock with a bow yeah so it was uh if you left that mountain point you was strictly bow you know what i mean your bow then yeah. your bow then or yeah. if you're shooting with a gun it's close right there. yeah and um so we're up a little bit at that first lookout and it's pounding the wind and that which is why they didn't go there so we're having a hard time judging it it's happening quick and like i said at this time i don't i mean my whole goal is not to make money off this video it's not right. like that's why i'm like letting ollie call the shots oh. which is his niche but I don't, his job's to get it. If he got on video, I'd probably be upset, obviously, but, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, whatever. Right, right. I just want, you know, I'm, I'm, here to, bear. I'm just here to hunt, especially yeah. as, this is what people don't understand. You think when you go on these hunts, the, the success rate is way lower. Like I said, I've been on six elk hunts. I've killed one. Yeah. And I well, think it, do, it doesn't sound like things had been going great up no, to this point. No, and that's so why you I'm probably saying, got a little bit excited. I, mean, I was excited because you know, and like I said, day two, Ollie's like, "Are you taking the bow?" I'm like, well, "What happened, buddy?" So <laughs> it's coming together, it, it, you know. And you're cold, shaking, talking to the guide, judging. I'm not really bothering. Ollie's doing his. I obviously mm -hmm. he's last. I, at, yeah. at any time, I never. So Ollie is to answer your question a little bit. Ollie is all the time video. Okay. So yeah. he's got tons of B-roll stuff. Yeah. And some yeah. of it's pretty cool, which, you know, around the tent. He, he did the the time lapse at night. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Oh, yeah. The, oh, yeah. 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 And, but around the tent, he's got George talking. Uh -huh. Some of the other part than just not, oh, turn it on. Oh, he shot it. Yeah. There's my brown bear. Okay. More yeah. telling the story. So, so, you, so where do you go to set up on this thing? And I mean, so he moves in with you. 
He's he's rolling. He's he's got a he's got a some sort of apparatus that he's filming with at all times, right Absolutely. there. And, it, and the, the guide's day. right on your back. Guide's on your back. Yeah. And so you're going down through there. At what point did you we, dis- I, determine this was going to be gun? When come, I wasn't coming off the mountain. Yeah. I wasn't coming off the yeah. mountain. The the wind, and another thing too, when I was shooting my bow, again I was wanting to be forty to fifty because uh-huh. a, a brown bear is unreal. The size of it's. It's a Honda Civic. It's the best way to yeah. explain yeah. it. Yeah. 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 So yeah. to say a 50, 60-yard bow shot, and people obviously have different levels yeah. of... That's pretty far bow a- shot. Accuracy. Yeah. But when you shoot as much as what I've shot and put as much time and energy and effort in to not wound a, a, an animal, especially... I can hit a Honda Civic at 60 yards. Sure. <laughs> yeah. sure. So yeah. there's a big target. Yeah. and um, But... If you wound it, you're done, which is a good rule. There's, if you draw blood, they ain't letting you shoot multiple. That's mm-hmm. your bear. So, to on the, the bow, as I'm, you know, I had a little target there. I'm at 30 yards. 20 yards is not far enough yet to where the wind's taking it. If you know where yeah. I'm going with it, yeah, yeah. I was to about 30 yards. So at 30, it's blowing about six inches. So I'd shot enough to know, you know, I you need could to adjust, be, adjust, yeah. and. Even on the bullet, I've shot, I got lucky. Brian Runyon shot, told me, or helped me with shoot um, long range. I got into that really hardcore. So I shoot some long range rifles, you know, out to a thousand yards and hit uh-huh. targets. So Runyon taught me minutes of angle, MOA through windage, elevation, and all that stuff, and totally nerded out on that, uh, reloading all that. So obviously can shoot long range my rifle, but it's the same way when that wind, even though you're shooting uh-huh. a bullet, yep. you know. At a couple hundred yards, you might be off two minutes, and that's, you know, four inches. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's multiples of 10, so I don't want to get in a minute of this angle. But I kind of knew the bow would going to have – if it was going to be bow, it's going to have to be probably sub-30, which yeah. – and, and, again, with the migration, I call it the migration. They were just moving through, and it was gone. Yeah. We never yeah. seen – They the was same, moving along pretty quick. We never seen the same bear twice. Yeah. And, didn't mill around. They weren't chilling. They mm-hmm. were just on the move. Yeah. So it was. So I kind of knew I was. So I'm getting down, ready to shoot with a gun. And George is obviously a great, great guide and was doing his job. So I'm thinking I'm going to shoot it from there. So I'm ranging it and I got his gun and I'm shooting. And, you know, we had kind of, uh, you know, we knew it was a big bear. And at that time, I'm not like getting picky. Yeah. We knew it was right. a boar. Yeah. We knew it was a big boar. Mm hmm. We Probably put him around nine foot, yep. and and George's job is to try to make sure you're happy. Yep. Want to make sure you're safe, yep. but make sure you're happy. It's a really a big bucket li- bucket list type hunt that he get ready. Yep. Yeah, okay. he don't want you to walk up and be disappointed. Yep, like on the altar. And he's great. He's he's great with with everything. George was, but um, we had kind of and he's waffling back and forth. Jason, I don't. And so it happens so fast, and we don't really shoot. And George is not really wanting me to shoot. And I'm like, George, what's going on, buddy? You know, he's like, we can't shoot this far with this wind. With a gun. You know, it was 200 yards. And that's not. I agree. You know, so, but he was trying to be ethical. And, and so it happens so quick. And you're with a 3.75? Th- a 375. 375. Yeah. And so it's a couple, of, you know, and obviously the bigger the bullet, the less wind. A, I don't know what that is, a 375. So it's bigger than like a 300. So it's a okay. big, it's, so it's a big, like, it's a 308 on steroids. Yeah. It's a big caliber. It's a, okay. you know, it's a brown, that's most yeah, of the that's brown. a big caliber. Isn't yeah. It? So we go back down the main lookout and I'm kind of a little depressed here and I'm thinking, Jesus, <laughs> God, man, you know, the weather's, the weather just gets to you. Ollie, Ollie, I caught Ollie being negative and stuff too. And you will. <laughs> yeah. You're just like, I just want to make a sound. Yeah, yeah. So if I miss it, I know Ollie's, you know, yeah, he's four foot two, so he can't do nothing, but yeah. <laughs> uh, no. So, we get crawl back down that little hole. I'm shivering. I'm like, oh my god, you know. So I don't know. A couple hours go by, and we thought we spooked the bear, and he had went away from the the river. So um, we're all the time looking, and at times you got to get up and go back and do some push ups or sit ups or some jump jacks or something just to try to stay warm. Yeah. And then you can come back. And at times you could, you know, get you a little fifteen minute nap if, between shivering, but. I'm out doing it's maybe a couple hours later. I'm over there doing I don't know, push ups or sit ups or something. 
and I, <laughs> I'm looking for a bear coming at me, you know, yeah. and he's like, <laughs> waving at me to come back. I'm like, all right, so we come back, and that bear, the one I shot, he had come back and went to the river. But he's up on that other look, and we're like, "Do we go up and get it?" And I said, "George, this is this is so this is going to happen. I don't have time to come off and get it with with a bow. I want to shoot it from here." And it was a little bit closer, and we'd already kind of knew where he was. You know, like they, they worked the edge of that bend right as the closest spot, and I already ranged it and everything. And and rightly so, George was being safe, so. I'm trying to get set up, and it's happening quick again. That's another thing, too. It, and I'm shivering, wind, and all of us not paying no attention to Ollie. So George is trying to, you know, do the right thing there. And he's like, Jason, I don't know. I don't like this shot. I don't like this shot. And I said, George, I can make this shot in my sleep, you know. And and what sold him was, so he's probably 60 yards from getting to where we need to shoot him. And we got lucky, and we got it on video. He stopped and kind of laid down was watching Sam and getting ready to jump off and pounce on him. And um, that gave us enough time. I said, George, you know, so I'm using his shooting sticks and his gun that I've never shot. I said, George, man, with this wind, you know, it's 40, what would you say? It's 45 mile per hour wind, Jason. This is too far of a shot. And I said, man, with that and even this 200 grain bullet, I'll give it, I'll give it seven, seven point four, seven point six minutes angle times 1.8 times seven. I'll give it, you know, whatever it was, 38. And he's like, okay, you can shoot that quick. So <laughs> I kind of rattled it off to yeah. show I just did it in my head because I needed to do it in my head because mm -hmm. with like my gun and Brian Runyon's gun, there, there's target turrets, just yeah. like, a, you know, like if you've seen the movie Snipers, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. you're dialing your scope right, yeah, to right. your exact your right, your right. elevation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the wind, you're kind of feeling and dialing your windage yeah. mm -hmm. into the wind so that catching that drift. George's was just a regular scope. It has no target. So I've got, yeah. to, I've got to manually put – and 180 yards for that big of a um, um, tread, um, you know, bullet just hadn't been at the part where I had to worry about the elevation. Okay. I just had to worry about the wind, and it was yeah. 40 mile, 45 mile per hour winds with 70 mile per hour cast. Yeah. So George was doing the right thing there. And um, so I, I rattled that off. I said, I'm, I'm going to give it – you know – so many inches of wind, you know, whatever. So I'm where I'm going to aim. George kind of calmed down, and it's happening. So I'm getting down. I'm slowing my – so obviously to shoot well, you got to try to slow your breathing down. Yeah. And shoot not really on a inhale. Yeah. Shoot on an exhale. So yeah, yeah. if you ever slow your breathing down, it's usually when you're calmest to get a mm -hmm. nice squeeze trigger. So I'm slowing my breathing down, eyes watering, nervous, cold, and, and – this is the part I said I hope Ollie got, which Ollie claims he did. George comes back down. This is – he's about – I don't know. He's probably 20 or 30. I could have shot him there, but I was wanting him to get as close as he could to the bend to put everything in my – George comes back down and whispers in my ear, and Ollie's got the mic here, and he's like, hey, Jason, buddy, I know I know you, you got this, the Vince Angle or something like that. And he said, but – I don't mean to put no more pressure on you, but if you wound this, if you wound this bear, you're done. And I was like, oh God, <laughs> leave me alone, let me calm down. So yeah. he's like, it's up to you, you know. I don't, I'm, I'm, you know, as I got this, George, I got this, you know. So George left me alone again, and um, which again, he was doing the right thing, and uh, so it comes down in there, and and I'm like, oh man, just, I'm trying, to, but at that distance, they don't stop. It ain't like you can mm -hmm. like whitetail. Sometimes you'll bleed or something. And the wind, even if I you yell at the top of your lungs, it ain't they ain't hearing you 180 oh, yards. Uh -huh. So uh, he ends up kind of pausing, and is courting away kind of good. And I, you know, held back towards the back hip there, and um, you know, gave it to where the wind would drift it in there. The good thing about that type of wind, it wasn't swirling; it was constant at 40. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you get six, seven mile per hour wind, it might be swirling to where yeah. you dial your scope this way. If it switches, yeah. you, you'll miss him completely. Yeah. The only good thing about 40 mile per hour winds, it stays consistent. So <laughs> I end up hitting it perfect. Um, um, blew his heart out. Didn't know it when I shot, but, you know, I shot. And most time on a good shot, it surprises you. So, mm -hmm. you know, you don't really know when it's going off, like jerking the trigger, and it kind of surprised you. It surprised me, and I heard like a thump kind of got back in the scope the recoil is obviously big on those bigger guns 
And I see it take off running into like the bush and the, the bush is like, it's thick, you know, uh-huh. you get off the river, it's, mm-hmm. it's thick. And you and, ain't just scanning it. You're going to hunt for it. Yeah. You're, you're, you, and that's where the danger part comes mm-hmm. in, you know, cause it's, you're from here, you know, this wall a lot of times from them. Yeah. Um, you know, sub 10 yards. And uh, yeah, that's, that'd be dangerous. Yeah, that's the dangerous part, you know. Yeah. I got hooked on it too, so I rebooked with him to do a, not to get to the end of. I rebooked with him to do a strictly bow hunt. Yeah. So that piece of it really gets under your skin. But when we we gave him plenty enough time, so I thought I seen him hit a tree in a little dark spot. So I'm hollering at Ian. I said, "Ian, you got him marked," Ian, and it's you know windy. And uh, I heard him say, "Yeah." So I kind of take my eyes back out of my scope and you know naturally when you kind of find a spot if you look away yeah, you, you kind of find lose. it yeah and ian didn't have it marked but we gave him 45 minutes and when we went that's another thing too we went down we had to cross the creek and it was amazing to see the um how how swift that current was how i mean how cold it was obviously you got waders on but you could feel which down it was we Freeze had to, we had to have sticks and Ian like Ian was the I want to say he was twenty five just got out of the Marines I mean stacked and he helped George across and I'm like I'm, I'm not, <laughs> get I'm on not, back here I'm not um I'm not busting myself in that <laughs> but to see how cold in that the um you know how strong the current was and you know we got sticks we go across there we all lock up. Besides Ollie, we had three guns. Uh-huh. And a lot of times, too, if you're up in a good lookout, you really don't have one in the chamber. You have one down the magazine. Yeah. yeah. Because if something's going to happen, you're going to see it. Yeah. yeah. But when you drop in the alders, everyone's got one. Chambered up. Yeah. In it, locked and loaded. George was first, obviously, you know, and his safety was off. <laughs> uh-huh. I, I think I was second and Ian was third, and obviously safeties are on. And you got one in the chamber, and we're trying to be off centered yeah. of everyone. Ollie's fourth videotaping. They come through three of us. They got a freebie with Ollie. Yeah. So. <laughs> Ollie's a little. Ollie's maybe. This is this is typically though where men die. Yeah, that's the. Um, that's, yeah, that's whenever the, you're whenever you're tracking one. Yeah, yeah, definitely wounded. They're going to protect themselves. Yeah, too. you hear those. You hear about those hunters that get killed by grizzlies. Yeah, this yeah. is this is typically it. They've went they got out them wounded. Yeah. Yeah, naturally, I was on the edge. You know, I was. Mm-hmm. I was Nervous, anxious, and but the, that was one thing. Like I said, I'd never experienced, and to see how strong they were and how big they were. So we go walking up to it, and we're hollering, you know, here it is, you know. And so we're trying to be loud. That's yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you don't want to slip in. Yeah, you, you know, you're not, shoot this so bitch again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we're talking loud, and yeah, they, yeah. you know, and trying to be loud going in. Yeah, and then when we see it, we're hollering, you know, to make sure so. We go up to it, and George goes up to it first, and you know we're obviously make sure it's expired, which obviously it had. And um, so, yeah, it uh, you know we unchamber stuff. One of them had we kept one loaded, you know, especially once we started butchering it. Yeah, you know, and that was that's another time when things happen because yeah. there's fresh blood, yeah. or uh-huh. and there's and you can't really expect them to know any different. Yeah, you know, uh-huh. they've never really seen humans, you know, uh-huh. for the most part. You know, and blood and guts yeah, and yeah. Meat and fresh meat. Yes. Uh, so that's when you're kind of if you're if it's your skin and you get a little tired and hop in, you got the gun and it's you're yeah. kind of yeah. And you know, two of us are kind of looking and while other two are kind of holding up. But it took me. I'll be honest. You know, I always wanted to picture me kind of holding it up underneath. I couldn't lift his yeah. head up to get a picture. It My took goodness. it took three of us to look roll it over. Ended up going, you know, square and nine seven. So they measure across the chest and from like the nose down. And it sometimes gives the pretty much the same when it stands up, the square in it. So it was nine foot seven inches. Wow. wow. So the so bigger than what you thought. The bigger than what we thought. thought. Yeah, yeah. And uh that's why it's like I told the girls, I said when it stands up it you know, hit his head on his head on the basketball rim. Wow. Yeah, he, yeah, if he stuck his nose yeah. up, he could My get it. goodness. He stuck his nose up, he'd he'd just bite the rim. That's to yeah. give it some perspective. But yeah. the awe part was the just the size of it. There was three yeah. of us to take we couldn't roll it because it expired on his belly. We wanted to roll it over and get some good pictures. So it took all four of us to roll it over. And 
you know, the paw, you see a lot of pictures with the, the paw. I'm holding the paw size of my face. But the biggest thing, you know, that I, I was just left and oh, I'm holding his arm up and not, not his like biceps. Yeah. His forearm there. Yeah. And I'm holding his, and his forearm is the size of my chest. Wow. Not his biceps, this part. Imagine like, how strong oh, that my. animal is. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, without so a doubt, you know, I was just, it took, I don't know, 20 minutes just in all. Yeah, I never really did. I don't think I've got over it now. Just the size of it, like I've said earlier a couple of times, I can't give an even if I, no matter what kind of, you know, I said Lou Holtz earlier, some type yeah. of good communicator that can yeah. give it some type of, um, relevance or something just one of those things you kind of got to be there to experience i couldn't even it's it was mind-boggling how big how beautiful the the uh, the environment they live in the fish and just everything and and and, and they set the hook on you yeah i (laughs) I was like i said elk is my number one but brown bears especially now i want to try to do one with with a bow and if i eat tag sandwich you know we're going to try to do another long trip to put the odds in her I'm all right with that because I've got, got one and I didn't get just an average one. I've got yeah, you know, a, yeah. a big, big one. Yeah. Um, you know, and like Boone and Crockett, I'll try to be quick with it. was kind of set up with Teddy Roosevelt to give like the quality of a, a deer or an animal and naturally the better health of a white tailed deer or a bear or whatever. They're going to be bigger body. It's bigger the all state mm-hmm. award. Of, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. So it didn't, it, and it's got to wait a period to be officially scored, which I probably wasn't. But they measured the skull, the width and the length of the skull is, you know. Mm-hmm. That's how they score it. Yeah, on how they score it. Obviously, you know, you can't really weigh them. But George had done, you know, 120. George pretty much. George said it was, if he had to take a guess, it was 12 to 1,300-pound animal. Nine, Cheat it. Yeah, it's uh, so brown b- black bear is very good if they're on berries. And it's all what yeah. they're eating. It wasn't very good. So a lot of times too, you're not. I bring back. I still got elk. Fishy. Yeah, it was very fishy. fishy. Yeah, and um, but it um, it uh, it was just. Um, I've heard that too about the berries. The you bear, want, the black bear you, on yeah, the berries. Yeah, you want a, a spring bear? They say will be on the berries, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or no, the fall bear. I shot a uh, black bear in the fall on the blueberries. It was on yours. Has been on blueberries. Yeah, it was very good eating. Okay, very good eating. But right. yeah, I left. I left out there just appreciation, just the trip, the the whole nine yards getting dropped in, and that type of wilderness, that environment, that type of animal size, to see mother nature, see all that experience, um, get it on video to record it. Um, 76 year old guide 120th and he just talk about once in a lifetime trip man yeah and you've uh, been on a lot of them yeah that that, wow it is it's it's the epitome now that doll sheep i think should be a good one is that the next hunt i was going to ask you what's what's next uh we've got um and all he's supposed to i think i'm going to take him on every one of my hunts from now on now just but we're going to uh elk in utah this year and sitka island on a mountain goat hunt. So that one's going to be pretty aggressive. Will, will you make us a promise and come back and tell us about those? Sure, sure. All I, right. Now, is, uh, is uh, Sir Monty Green going to be with you on the uh, elk hunt? Uh, no, this is a like a con- – um, this is a tag that we bought. So oh. Monty, Monty a lot of times does a lot of do-it-yourself yeah, hunts. Okay. Yeah. But, and I've got a bunch of points built up for Utah uh-huh. that I'll probably – you know, Monty will definitely be helping me. But. Okay. Maybe he uh, can we'll phone him in. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Like, yeah, if he ever makes it back. He comes here to hunt whitetail, doesn't he? You yeah, he's up here last year. Yeah. We'll, we'll get him in We'll here. get him in here. Hey, guys, we got to pay the bills. Let's talk about AP Prep and how you look them up at APPrep.info. You go in there. If you've got a child and they need performance training, that's one of the things that they offer. And it's simple. Their performance training, it drives their athletes to seize full potential genetic potential and first of all they're going to assess your kids overall balance their mobility their hand-eye coordination their foot yeah. we got to wrap it up yeah. man because uh beef our editor she will bust our balls if we you go over it. two hours well, well, hey yeah we appreciate it yeah, man. yeah that was awesome guys. yeah so uh you got anything else man hey shout yeah. out speaking of hunting show we uh shout out uh the foldings not shout oh, out man. but hey we're, we're thinking about you i lost one of my old hunting buddies Thoughts today Let, guy yeah. that raised raised me out in the woods in the very mm-hmm. beginning uh yeah he was he was a good one so uh yeah. foldings we're thinking about you mm-hmm. but uh this will be out in probably about two weeks probably you got it so you got anything else bub yep. like and subscribe like and subscribe thank you See? See?